action rolls on in Buffalo, where the high-scoring Bulls have entered the national conversation. Rushing sensation Jarrett Patterson leads Buffalo against Akron, coming up next. From Western New York, it's college football presented by Home Depot. Akron off their first win in over two years against Buffalo on CBS Sports Network. And the Bulls headed to the MAC championship game on Friday of next week. 4 0, still perfect in 2020. And welcome. I'm Ed Cohen. Great to be joined by the former Notre Dame quarterback, Malik Zaire. Well, what a weekend last weekend for Buffalo on their way to play at Ohio. Game canceled halfway to Athens. Did a U turn, got back, and the big reward, Malik, in the top 25 for the first time in program history. Well, it's well-deserved and especially built on Jared Patterson's back and that offensive line. Those two together, the synergy they have is something special, and it's been resulting in major points on the field and major stats for our guy Jared Patterson. Oh, it was special a couple of weeks ago against Kent State. Jared Patterson entering record-breaking territory, eight touchdowns, 409 yards. It was incredible. I don't even do this on video games. The amount of yards and touchdowns <laughs> he's put together is incredible, but they have to give credit to that offensive line blocking for him. This equivalent to a Notre Dame offensive line. Just straight ballers. And that's what I like to see. And we're going to see a lot of that tonight. 710 yards in the last two games. Where else do you get that? But Jared Patterson has the ability to make it happen. Back-to-back 300-yard -back rushing games. And Tion Dollard has gotten it done as well for the Zips. Tion Dollard packs a punch. He's everything that you want to take the pressure off of Zach Gibson. And when we talk about strength, that's what he's got. He's got everything in between the tackles, outside the tackles, and he's going to be making if he wants to put this team in a position to win against a great team in Buffalo. Well, we don't have the snow, we don't have the cold, but we have the rain. Nonetheless, 53 degrees December in Buffalo. Bommy will take it. Bowles kicking off here against Akron. And we are about ready to go. Back to receive Michael Matheson for the Zips. And there is Alex McNulty to tee it up for the Bulls. Malik two weeks ago. Patterson was a story. Bulls, winners of the MAC East. So we'll take on the winner of Ball State and Western Michigan out of the West. Those two meeting as we speak in Muncie. Western Michigan with a two touchdown lead. A lot happening in the MAC on this Saturday. And away we go. And the Zips will take it out at their own 25 yard line. And the quarterback, you mentioned him, Malik, Zach Gibson, the redshirt freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, leading the Zips and coming off their first win under head coach Tom Arth last week, 31-3 over Bowling Green. The biggest thing that stands out to me about this quarterback here in Gibson is his competitive fire. You're going to see it all day, especially in this game. Him have that fiery, that compassion, that competitiveness nature that makes him who he is. And that's going to stimulate this offense because their goal is to move the ball, move the rock. And that's what we expect to see tonight. The starting lineups presented by Michelob Ultra. So the Akron offense from their own 25. And they run so much RPO, run pass option. Dollard is stuffed maybe a yard or so against this great Buffalo front. The offensive line, a young one for Akron here against the Bulls. The key for them, especially against such a veteran and stout defensive line in Buffalo is that you don't want to play behind the sticks in this game. You want to have everything at least leaning and falling forward, and you're going to have a good chance of that with Dollar in the backfield because he's so big. He's unlike Jared Patterson in the stature. This kid is going to lay the wood on somebody else. Three-yard gain on first down for Dollard. So a second down here from the 28-yard line. And Gibson will throw. Looking outside, Tyler couldn't hold on to it, and he was crushed by Gaddafi Wright, incomplete. And third down coming for the Zips. What you see from that already is how important that four-man rush, four rush is for that bo uh, the, the Buffalo defensive line. And just look at this hit right here. This is what we call physical. The second level or the second unit of that defense being able to lay the wood just complements the physicality to this Bulls defense. The Bulls don't blitz much, but when you have guys like Malcolm Kuntz, Eric Black up front, you don't really need to. 37, Gibson to throw again. Avoids the first rush, but can't avoid the second. And he's brought down by the big fella, Eddie Wilson. 
And a three and out to start for Akron here against the vaunted Buffalo defense. It's going to make it tough when you're stepping up against guys like Mike Coons and then you have to get away from guys like Eddie Wilson. It's going to be a long day unless they work on that quick passing game that makes them so efficient like they had last week that get able to move the ball in tough situations like this. You don't want to be in third and long situations as this offense. So for Akron, it's Kyle Romanek on a punt. And Ron Cook back to receive for Buffalo, nearly blocked. But he got it away. Kevin Marks was there. This is Cook broke one tackle. Cook turns the corner. And Cook into Akron territory near the 45-yard line. So the Bulls will take the field on offense for the first time. Our starting lineups again brought to you by Michelob Ultra and Malik. Talking about the quarterback position, Kyle Van Trees under center for the Bulls today again. Kyle Van Trees, he's not a guy that's going to give you a bunch of numbers in this offense, but he is the X factor of this offense. Everybody knows when you're going into a game, when you're playing this Buffalo offense, you want to stop 26 and play man in the back end. Well, this is where Kyle Van Trees comes in so impactfully because he's going to take advantage of those one-on-ones and make you pay. It makes it hard to stop this offense with him being on point. Now look who's behind him. Number 26, Jared Patterson. They fake the give. Van Trees to throw behind his man and incomplete was looking for the tight end Zach Lefebvre. They want to involve him more here today. Second and ten coming up here for the Bulls as we look at their starting lineup and just a terrific offensive line in front of Patterson. All these guys are experienced. Not only are they experienced, they can play in multiple positions. Nowadays in college football, as an offensive lineman, you got to be able to play tackle to tackle and even center if it's required. So a pass play to start last week or last game rather against Kent State Patterson went for 62 yards on the first play from scrimmage here's the first carry for Patterson and he does not get much brings up third down and long for Buffalo Malik what can you say back-to-back 300 yard games 409 against the Golden Flashes one thing you know that they're going to hand the ball off to him Hell or high water. So you know the Akron defense is expecting him coming through this offensive line. But the good thing about this is what you know that's coming, you can try to stop with being physical. It's all about these one-on-one -on -one matches. They have to win on this defense if they want to make plays later in the game. Bowles better than 50% this year on third down. They throw again to the outside. Ruiz with the catch. But he has dropped well short of the first down by Ronald Jackson Jr., a cornerback from Detroit, but there is a flag on the play. Going to Ruiz early is what we like to see, those one-on-ones. We know they were stacking the box. Ruiz getting open in the slot, and that's a lot of what Coach Konecki said is very important for this offense. David Siegel for the first time today. Got a mask up there. Yes. <laughs> Not bad in the rain. A little coverage. Looks like we got a decision here. There is no foul for illegal substitution on the defense. Fourth down. Ah, uh, pick it up. Interesting spot though on the field here. Bulls. We right around the 45-yard line. Such a dynamic offense, and this is very gainable yardage right here for this Buffalo offense. I don't think they want to slow down at all, especially coming off of last year where they had their first drive being 14 plays long. They're looking to eliminate that and be quicker on the offensive trigger. For now, going for it from the 41 and a fourth and five. Let's I'm see expecting, if they try to draw them offside. I'm definitely expecting if they do run this play to go to Antonio Nunn, third and seven to ten. That's 100 percent. Kyle Van Trees is going to his guy on the outside. Nunn, there he is, bottom of your screen, number one in blue, the top target for Kyle Van Trees. 30. Well, they'll get the game clock at 11 seconds. So an early fourth down opportunity here for Buffalo. The top scoring team in the country, almost 51 points per game. That's Ruiz in motion. Van Trees to throw again on the slant. Ruiz very close. And the marker is going to give them the first down, a fourth down conversion on the opening drive for Buffalo. 
Great play call by the offensive coordinator. Sending Ruiz in motion to kind of get a feel for the quarterback of his man or zone. He was able to shake free and then find that gap. This is one of my favorite plays on the third down. Fourth down is being able to run a guy to take the cheese and bring a guy right behind him. It's a great play for a first down. Yeah, it tastes good in this circumstance. <laughs> a shift Molinich to tight end. It's Patterson looking for room on the right side. And he is swallowed up here by the front for Akron. Among those in there was Eric Benley. And second down coming up here for the Bulls. Their favorite concept of outside zone where Jared Patterson get, gets to be patient. Can't find a hole, but just give credit to this Akron defensive line of not giving them space for a small guy not to be able to find those holes to crease through. It's really good to see this team starting on a hot note. There's A.J. Watts, the safety, and the Akron starters. Watts last week with Akron's first interception of the season. Bantrese for none, trying to break a tackle and cannot out across the 30-yard line. And that'll bring up third down here for Buffalo. He's taken down by Charles Amakwa, the sophomore cornerback. And you got to play off on a guy like none because he can take you to the end zone and take you over top. But this is good. As long as he catches it at five, you can rally the tackle and not have missed tackle or missed opportunities. You can live with that. A five-yard game. But now, third and short is where the Buffalo offense is great and where Akron defense has to step up and get these guys off the field. On the 28-yard line, four pass plays for the Bulls. Two carries now, three for Patterson. He's got the first down and a little bit more. Extra push across the 20 yard line. And the second first down conversion on this opening drive for Buffalo. This right here, the offensive line does a great job, especially that seal block on number seven. And then, you know, you got Patterson who's just going to fit right through there. And he's like a bowling ball. <laughs> You're going to have to put hats on him, but he's always going to fall forward because of his stature. But that's what makes him so great. If he makes the cutback and gets vertical, watch out. In the 19, first and 10 for the Bulls. Patterson again, scapers, sidesteps, still on his feet, and guided out by Michael Scott at the 11 yard line. Let's take a look at the red zone numbers brought to you by Verizon. 18 trips for the Bulls. Malik, they punched it in 17 times. That's what you call a guarantee. When you got an offensive line that's so skilled down here in the red zone, they're going to get those blocks necessary for those backs and Kevin Marks and Jared Patterson to really finish these drives off. And as you can tell already, this defense has been on the field for longer than it should be. And this is what is going to take for them to get off the field. They're going to have to find something to put these guys behind the line of scrimmage. After an eight-yard gain, Van Trees airs it out. Corner of the end zone. None. Incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. The defender's back was to none the entire way. And this should move it up and be pass interference on the defense. We'll get the official word from David Siegel. Look at that concentration. And this one he Rolling does on the so field well. is an incomplete pass. Pass interference. Defense number 18. The ball, the foul occurred in the end zone by rule. The ball is placed at the two-yard line. Automatic. First down. Not much you can do one-on-one -on -one for A.J. Watts that time. A.J. Watts knows what's coming, but the thing about Antonio Nunn is he loves these matchups, these one-on-ones where you're just throwing it up. There's no, a lot of, not a lot of thought going into it, and that's the trust between him and Kyle Bantries to draw that foul and bring it even closer to getting an early score. From the two. The give to Patterson, working for it, and no gain. Second down coming up. Well, no surprise. You go to the guy who scored eight touchdowns last week, but Akron stands him up. Nine plays thus far in this drive for Buffalo. And that just shows you how overwhelming this offense can be. They're going to be on the, on the field for 14 plays if they need to, 15 plays if they have to, just because they're going to chip you away little by little, five yards here, three yards here, and then do something on the outside with one-on-one. -on -one. And this is what makes it so tough because your defense gets tired. Go to Patterson again. Stood up again. Akron up to the task, and no surprise. Here's number 27, Bubba Arslanian. 16 tackles last week against Bowling Green. 5-9 is what stands out about this guy named Bubba, and he's bringing the pain. I mean, like, like the coach said when we talked to him a couple days ago, he is going to bring that punch. He's not going to, he's going to be great with his hands, get off those blocks. At 5-9, I mean, good grief. The way he's able to fit in those holes and make the play is incredible. Third down, quick snap, Patterson. 
extra push did he get in touchdown they stopped him but he kept his footing extends for the score on his seventh carry of the drive patterson punching it in what a second effort nice couple jump cuts and look at this he's already so low that you gotta literally jump on top of him to bring him down because if not he's going to continue to move those feet i mean he's got saquon thighs so you know it's going to be a lot to take this guy down and when you have a second effort with a guy like that you're going to result in some points somewhere you know, like a number 26 who wears blue in new york state from barkley to patterson and now to alex mcnulty perfect 29 of 29 uh, point after tries here in 2020. So the Bulls cash in on their first drive of 11 plays, and McNulty punctuates it with the extra point. But Patterson into the end zone. He had eight two weeks ago. He's got number one here today. The Bulls, they're ranked, and they're up on Akron. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. By Verizon. The network more people rely on gives you more. And by Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Jared Patterson, one yard touchdown. Career touchdown number 50 for the junior from Maryland. And the Bulls with the early 7-0 advantage here on CBS Sports Network. Ed Cohen, Malik Zaire, and our entire crew here from Western New York. You can see a wet one here to start. And Alex McNulty to kick it away. And yeah, this will come out to the 25 for Akron. All 11 play drive to start for the Bulls. They went 46 yards, a little over five minutes. Patterson with the score. And Malik, I know you love playing video games. You appreciate what this guy has done. We're going back in time. Felt like Tecmo Bowl a couple weeks ago for Patterson against Kent State. Oh, man, he was all over the place. 30-plus yards, rushes, and six of them, eight touchdowns. I mean, good grief. You can't even make that up if you try, but that just <laughs> shows you just how special a kid like this is to be able to have the conditioning to not only start the game hot, but to finish the game hot. And that's what the Coach Leopold loves so much about him is that he gets stronger as the game goes on, similar to Derek Henry, just not the same size. The graphics and technology, <laughs> safe to say they've improved over the years. As Dollard hits the handoff, and he's chased down by... Gaddafi right. I'm sure our crew has the music from Techno Bowl stuck in their heads. Let's check out our keys in the game brought to you by Ryan. Akron had to start off with winning your one-on-one -on -one matchups. You know you're gonna what you're gonna get in the box and on the outside, so that's where it has to start. Also, protect the football. Zach Gibson does a great job when he doesn't give it away to the other team. And for the Buffalo Bulls, start fast and most importantly, you know you're good on offense and defense, but win that special teams battle if you want to be able to flip the field and score more points. A two yard pickup, uh, first down for Dollard. From the 27, it's Dollard again and broke the first tackle, but doesn't get much. And he is held up by Tyree Thompson, the grad transfer from UCLA. And the third down coming up, five plays thus far for Akron from scrimmage. For a team that doesn't blitz, you can see the loop kind of get to him before in the backfield, but then you got these hats that they put on the, the offender every time, and that's how you stop Tion Dollar's momentum from gaining the yards that he does because one guy is not going to be enough, but when you bring 10 hats to him, it's going to be enough to stop him right there in his tracks. 5'11", 205, a tough guy to bring down. So third and six here for Akron. Gibson with time throws over the middle pass is caught what a catch by Nate Stewart the senior from Bethlehem Pennsylvania had a first down pickup for the zips 15 yard reception there he goes what a confident throw by Zach Gibson early on staying in the pocket and being able to deliver strike on a timing dig route as you can tell right before the hash because anything after the hash you're gonna have some collision with the safety what a timing route and that's what something coach Arthur talks about head coach for Akron builds with his quarterback back to decision making and that's what Gibson is getting better at as he gets older. It's Gibson again to throw. Almost got hit. Airs it out. Completes over the top of the secondary. 
And this time Michael Matheson is spun out after a 26 yard gain. Back to back first down receptions for Akron. This is why I love Gibson because he get, get hot. He can get hot on you and this is what you call a three level throw. Have a post and dig combination on the outside and look at that. You high low the corner. He makes a good decision. Puts enough air on it and he gets his player the football. This is what you want to see. Tom Arth has a lot of confidence and trust in his quarterback to make plays and you're going to have to make plays against a defense that doesn't give up a lot. Former star quarterback at John Carroll. He's tough on his quarterbacks and rightly so. You can appreciate that. Here's Dollard. Turns one way, turns another, pushing the pile, taking Corey Gross for a bit of a ride. And Tion Dollard, you could see the strength and the balance that time, 12 yards, another first down for the Zips. Tion Dollard is going to stay on his feet here, and this is what happens when you can throw the football. You're going to have lanes open up for guys like him to be able to bully through and get yards. All I can think about when I watch him is <laughs> that's the stuff he makes when he's running through those tackles and he looks good doing it. Here's what Dollar has done. Six touchdowns had four against Kent State. He and Patterson, some big games against the Golden Flashes. Gibson, a lot of time. Rolling out. Gibson airing it out for the end zone and well long of George Qualls. Throws it away. Brings up second down. But Malik, you know, Brian Gasser, co-offensive coordinator for Akron, spoke about neutralizing the Bulls' pass rush. On this drive, at least, they've done a good job of it. If you're able to slow down that amazing four-man rush that they have, you'll have time to let plays develop downfield, and that's going to give you those shots you need to move the six. And that's the key of this offense. They want to move the rock. And if you give Zach Gibson time to find guys down the field, they're going to be open because that first, that, that front seven, and especially that front four, is really dependent on getting home to the quarterback. They've gone 57 yards. Second and 10 from the Buffalo 18. Gibson will throw through the hands, deflected, almost picked off. Hung on the left hand of Tyrone Hill for a while, and finally incomplete. And third down coming up for the Zips. I know the heart dropped a little bit for a quarterback because once you see that ball tipped in the air and it's like slow motion, you're like anybody can get it. It's up for grabs, but it goes to the RPO and your footwork. You have to be able to pop those feet so you don't throw all arm and throw over his head like he did here. And Tyrone Hill, the senior, New Jersey kid out of Don Bosco prep. Five pass breakups coming in, nearly with the pick. The call and looking for a screen here. Let's see what they do. Play clock coming down. Gibson looking over the middle, completes it. Ball knocked loose. And it's incomplete. Qualls over the middle got crushed. And they finally whistle it dead. And Qualls a little slow to get up the wet turf. Brings up a decision here on fourth down for Akron. Ooh, we that's what you call <laughs> total ball destruction. You win the one on one, but look at just the safety coming downhill, shoulder the right way to tackle, and that's what we call back at Notre Dame TBD, total ball destruction, and it came through right here on this play. So Corey Smeagle on for the field goal try. AJ Brown coming hard over the middle with that hit. 35 yard attempt. He's 4 of 5 on the year. This is blocked. Buffalo with the block. Hill is there. And Hill's off to the races. Tyrone Hill, the blocked field goal and the touchdown for Buffalo. Special team strikes for the Bulls. And they lead it by two scores here against the Zips. Oh, my goodness. I think the tip got to him. He wanted to make up for it. And what an effort play on the special team. And that's what we talked about the keys of the game. We know offense and defense is special, but the special teams need to come through tonight to make this a complete dominant football team. And we're seeing it early with a nice block and a return. I mean, hey, they're going to find their point somewhere. Of what we watching. So the Bulls, remember last year's meeting, they scored in their opening drive. Offense was shut out. They picked up two defensive scores in a 21-0 win over Akron. Special teams cashing in. And now McNulty, 30 of 30, and still perfect on extra points here this season. Tyrant Hill, Malik, strikes for Buffalo. Tyrone Hill, look at that, just getting his conditioning in, stride out to the end zone after a great special teams play, and Buffalo is going to be on the road right here.
Well, start your Sundays with that other pregame show as the CBS Sports Network crew breaks down all the recent news and gets you ready for every game on the NFL calendar. It's coming your way tomorrow morning at 8 Eastern on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Hill, the block field goal. And Malik, you said special teams would be critical right into the gut. He took it back the other way to the house. Oh, man, you talk about what it takes to be a, not only dynamic, but a dynasty team is to be complete in all three phases. And for them to make some special teams, just like I said in the beginning, is going to make this team even better. They're showing it tonight, often and early. And McNulty on once again, this shy of the goal line, taken out from the two. And this is Matheson out to the 25-yard line. Ball, is it loose? There's a flag on the play as well. Looks like Akron has the possession, and now we await the flag. Let's see what happens. There's been a lot of collisions on those special teams plays. Let's see. It looks like the ball came out right before he fell, and Akron did get on it. Here's David Siegel. During the kick, personal foul, legal block, low the waist, receiving team, number 58. The 15-yard penalty will be at the previous spot for re-kick. That's Marco Donatelli. We got six, 16 on your screen right here with an illegal block. Can't do that. Even though, you know, you're facing against bigger and stronger guys, it's, it's easy to try to go low, but you got to put that guy right in the place where in the position where you don't take too much of a hit, but you are also able to let your guy be able to find that room to get by. But you can't do plays like that. It's been real chippy on these special team kickoffs so far. A lot of action had mainly attended to the kicker himself with them double teaming him and on, on the receiving end of the side. And there is Tom Arth, his second year at the helm of Akron, a major rebuilding project. But to get the win like they did last week against Bowling Green ended nation's longest losing streak, had lost 21 in a row and went for a run in the morning. Tom Arth, he felt good. His guys delivered, and all that hard work finally pays off. They're going to re-kick it here. And they'll tee it up from the 50. And Mathis and I, down he'll need a return. Let's see what McNulty does. And they will bring this out to the 25-yard line. Akron will start once again on their third drive of the game. We've talked about Buffalo's front and how important it is to block in front of Gibson, the Buffalo defensive line. Traditional 4-3 led by this guy, our Casper player profile, Malcolm Koontz invited to the Senior Bowl. Malcolm Koontz is everything that you want from a defense end because not only is he physical, he has speed, he can play the run, and he's very especially good in the pass game. And also, the offensive coordinator for Akron knows, understands that as well. So you're going to see a lot of chipping by the running back, some extra help from the tight end, anything to slow this four-man rush down, especially Malcolm Coons. Four sacks this year, registered nine that led the MAC a year ago. Matheson shifts. Give out of the RPO to Dollard. And he's jumped on by the Bulls, and that brings up second down. We saw James Patterson get in the mix as well. Haven't mentioned him yet, but that's Jarrett's twin brother, who is one of the aces for the Bulls in their linebacking core. Oh, uh, James and Jared, I got a chance to talk to Jared yesterday and just how special their relationship is. Being on different sides of the ball, they always pushed each other to work harder and talked a little smack too along the way, whether it be Oklahoma drill that they ran against <laughs> each other or just day-to-day uh, -day at home. But this relationship and bond between those two, something special. Dollard stumbles and not much. May have lost the yard. Max Michelle was there to finally bring him down. And third and nine coming up here for Akron. Wow. Ball State 
After it was 13 all, they gave up two scores. Malik, they've tied it up in Muncie, Indiana, with under seven to play. Winner of that game wins the MAC West and will face Buffalo next week in the title game in Detroit. Well, if I'm Buffalo, I know who I want to win this game, and that's Ball State. Western Michigan had a seven overtime game in the last year, but this year, I mean, Buffalo is going to be a hard team to stop. But it's going to be, it's going to come down to the wire between those two teams. Hacklin's converted one third down opportunity so far. Dollard with room. And Dollard out across the 30. Ball jarred loose. Coons fighting Matheson for it. And Matheson wins the battle and scoops it up. That was as good as it gets. Two guys wrestling for position. Balls on the turf. And Matheson able to get the edge against the bigger Coons. Look at that effort by and, and just reaction by the receiver to not only get the ball, but bounce Coons away from the football. That's what that's pretty special. And that's what the effort is going to require for this Akron team to keep the ball rolling. They need that's plays well. like that. Their first of the half. As you can see, Tion Dollar running hard, but when you got all those hats on the football, you're trying to strive so hard to get more yards. Media timeout. It's interesting to see how it finished. Timeout, landslide holds, and Buffalo Bulls up here on Akron. Let's take another look. Tion Dollard, was he down? Looks like it. Akron. Hold on to the football and get the first down. He's definitely down, but you can just see the effort of those guys in the Buffalo defense scratching, clawing, tugging at the football to the last second of the play. And you're going to have a lot of these, unfortunately, when you're playing a team that's very aggressive and they're very physical, especially at the point of tackle. I mean, you got four or five guys converging on the ball, carried in Dollar, who's just trying to get down, did a great job of trying to get to the first down but when you're going against a defense that's stellar like this you're going to have to hold him to that football after further review the runner was down with control of the ball this was short of the line to gain it'll be fourth down at the 31 yard line clock to start on the snap oh they had moved the sticks who are ready for the first down but this will move them back and fourth down and four gibson will come off and the akron punt team will come on here with three and change to go in the opening quarter. Right now, that's the safe call to make. You just had a huge momentum swing with the block field goal. Just make sure you can flip field and give your defense a chance, who did a great job in their first in their first stance against this offense, but you know, you don't want to give them short fields at all. So great job. Buffalo will still kill. be charged a timeout. They have two remaining in the first half. So it's gonna be Romanic to punt once again for Akron and Ron Cook receiving for Buffalo. Bulls a two yard score from Patterson on their first drive and then a blocked field goal for the touchdown and Roman gets it away. Cook for the 31. Ron Cook spun into a sea of zips on coverage at the 38 yard line. That's where Buffalo will start its latest drive. Jared Patterson. Eight touchdowns last game. He's got one today. We'll take the field with the Bulls offense. It's time for the Duke Project Smarter. Brought to you by the Home Depot. Malik Zaire, look at the holes for Patterson against Kent State. Holes so big you can drive a Mack truck, garbage <laughs> truck, dump truck through there. And not only is he not touching the ground, he's staying clean. But look at this. The offensive line does a great job of washing down. You're bringing your two blockers. And just look at the patience from Patterson and the effort from the blockers downfield. Even Antonio Nunn is getting involved. They're not letting anything stop Patterson from reaching the goal. And they're doing a good job. I mean, look at what he's doing per game. 230. 30 yards per contest. He's in Sanders and Allen territory. LT, LaDainian Tomlinson in there as well. And now the Bulls and Patterson back to work. We haven't seen Kevin Marks, their other star running back yet. Patterson, seven carries for 21 on the first drive. Trying to bounce it to the outside. And not much as he's finally escorted out by Ronald Jackson Jr. But the amazing thing, Malik, about Patterson, 230 yards per game. He leads the country in all-purpose yardage. He doesn't have a single catch this season. That's incredible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To be all-purpose and have no catches, but you just see just how tough it is to be able to bring a guy like this down. You even got some guys on the sideline trying to get their hits <laughs> in just because he's that tough of a ball carrier and a problem for defenses all over the country. Second and ten, play fake, Van Trees over the middle to Ruiz, bobbled, 
And finally, a whistle dead, incomplete. That'll bring up third down here for Buffalo. And overall, taking nothing away from Patterson's first touchdown, but they've done a good job, Akron, defensively here to start the game. Akron is just stuck with it. They may not have had all the biggest plays in the game so far, but one thing they do is they're finishing plays right. As you can tell, Ruiz coming down with it, but the effort of the safety on this play to break up the football, another TBD that we like to see puts this team in a third and, and long position that they're not very used to seeing. Patrice again to the outside. Off the hands, incomplete. Again, went the tight ends way. Zach Lefebvre. And a three and out for the Bulls and Van Trees. And that'll bring on the punting unit for Buffalo. Here are two 12 to go in the opening quarter. They got the matchup they want with LaFave on a smaller defender. But if I'm Kyle Van Trees, I'm not feeling too bad. You know, he's putting the ball where it's supposed to be. Uh, they're going to have to shake off the, the wet footballs out there. But this, they're open. And that's the thing that they're going to have to capitalize on and not let a team like Akron stick around because they have a, they're a team that really takes the momentum and energy and really builds on that and makes it tough for teams to just put them away. Kevin Finnegan on a punt for the Bulls. Jeremiah Knight is back. They call him Boogie Knight. And yeah, won't get a stab at this one. Oh, almost touched it. And the good news is he let it go. The Bulls will let it rest at the Akron 12-yard line. And the Zips offense and Gibson will come back out after a 50-yard punt with the bounce. For Finnegan, Akron, first win since 2018. Malik ended a 21-game losing streak. The win against Bowling Green. Coach Hart's done a great job of convincing his team it's not about playing other people or playing against people. It's about playing for something and playing for themselves. And these guys have got in their mind that they're going to be competitive and they're going to try and give their most effort for the guy next to them. And that takes away a lot of the pressure when you're facing a team that's putting up 50 points a game like Buffalo. Not trying to snap the road slide, but one step at a time. And on first down to the outside, Sean Name, the redshirt freshman with his fifth catch of the year. Three-yard pickup here for the Zips. And Gibson, he's had time. That's been the good news so far for the offensive line of Akron. Gibson having time is great, but the thing that to worry about and watch as the game continues is Gibson's decision making. Mm. He's, the, he's very accurate in the beginning of the game, but the second half of the game is where you really want to focus and see if he's locked in. Right now, he's doing a great job of putting his team in a position to not be in a bad spot. A dollar for now on the sideline for Akron. Knight was lined up in the backfield. Gibson against Koontz got away. Throws it away. Wow, Gibson was in the grasp of the most dangerous defensive end right near the goal line. Incomplete. And third down coming up for the Zips. You see Koontz right here standing up, giving the, deep, the uh, offense a tackle or something else to think about. You see the spin, and you just see the effort on the quarterback. He didn't finish the play, but he's definitely rattling the quarterback and making him uncomfortable. That's what you want to do. If you can't exactly hit him, you can make him uncomfortable to draw the play out, let your defense rally, and allow a guy like Koontz to make plays when it counts. They take an incompletion any day of the week. Gibson, with pressure coming, completes it. Matheson. Stops at the 15-yard line. Black and Gross were there. And Akron likely forced to punt here with one minute to go in the first quarter. You know, Gibson has been sacked 22 times this year. He did not want to take one on that second down opportunity against Koontz. One thing you learn as a quarterback, especially young, those, those hits add up, and you get sick of them real quick, so it makes your decision-making and getting the ball out of your hands at a priority. And you can see there, even though it wasn't for a first down, he gave his receiver a chance, and it was able to be enough to not take a hit, but also keep the ball above the chains. Third punt for Romanik. Cook back to receive. We'll take it off the bounce. Ron Cook, still on his feet. Cook turns it upfield, dives. A stop shy of midfield. Great field position once again for Buffalo after the 44-yard punt from Romanek. Well, this year, the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway is back, and it's bigger than ever, giving away $2 million in tuition. But learn more at drpepper.com. You ever see how easy those challenges are? I wish I could have done that to get some <laughs> scholarship money on my end, but you know what a great what a great thing to pay attention to. 
He is Malik Zaire, former Notre Dame and Florida quarterback. I'm Ed Cohen, and this is Kyle Van Schrees leading the Bulls back onto the field, and they stay with Patterson in the backfield. Dancing with it. And Patterson pushed out just past the 50. You can see the, deep, uh, the Buffalo sideline getting a little hype after the play. And it's hard when you're tackling a guy this little because you can't find the right surface to hit him on. So if he throws out a stiff arm being strong how he is, it's going to make it tough to bring him down. But, you know, Patterson packs a punch himself, so that stiff arm is pretty deadly. You know, they worked on tackling all week at Akron getting ready for this one. Bulls 14-0 after one quarter. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by The Home Depot. First quarter summary here in Western New York. Jarrett Patterson, seven carries on the opening drive, gets in from one yard out, and then the block field goal. Tyrone Hill, the block, and all the way upfield for the touchdown. Bulls special the team strikes. They lead this 14-0 on Muscle Milk. Game summary, Malik Zaire, Patterson, 26 yards so far on the ground. It's just another day in the offense. He's making it look easy, but this team competes on all three phases of the game, trying to outscore each other. Special teams tries to score, defense tries to outscore the offense, and offense tries to keep it up, and that's why they get 50 points a game. And flags all over the place right before the snap. Ball start, offense, number 59. Five-yard penalty, second down. And that is... Fusak, the right tackle. That shift, you got to hold your water up front. A lot of action. Obviously, Akron is trying to find any way to shift and get in position to kind of crease and keep that offensive line at bay from reaching the second level because when they do, Patterson is going to make them pay. They have Marks lined up the previous play. Right now, it's only Patterson. He gets it. Patterson right up the gut and yeah, pushing the pile. Inside the 45-yard line of Akron, his 10th carry here today. And Jared Patterson trying to get it done on the ground again for the Bulls. This is what he loves. Look at all the jump cuts he has in the inside zone. He's trying to find the lane that he wants to crease, and he's patient. But this is where he's so special because he's going to carry the pile along with that offensive line pushing those guys. And like you mentioned, we haven't seen Kevin Marks just yet, but that's okay because we know that whenever he comes in, he's an extra boost for this offense. Third and one. Patterson once again. Yeah, it looks like he has it. Well, he came into this game, needed 227 yards to match Barry Sanders' record for yards in three consecutive games, 937 back in his Heisman year of 1988. Maybe the best individual season for an offensive player in college football history. Now, Patterson has a long way to go, but as we've seen, he can get that in an instant. Well, if you got 10 carries in the first quarter, I'm expecting these coaching staff, as well as Patterson, knowing what's going on, they're going to try to hit that marker. Marks in, number 41, along with Patterson. Patterson breaks a tackle, Ooh. side steps. Ooh. Still on his feet, Patterson on the edge. And knocked out by Randy Corcoran. Got a block downfield, I believe, by Van Trees. And moved the change after Patterson's biggest run. This is what you call ooh and ah, ooh and ah, ooh and ah. These guys can't stay on their feet. I didn't think it was because of the rain. It's because he's making them miss like that. JP with the sweet feet. And you can tell that he is a man on the mission tonight and accomplishing that huge record that Barry Sanders has. Now, moves into the 24. You mentioned none. Number one lined up bottom of your screen. And they stick with the two backs. Marks. First carry, Marks avoids the defense and high steps into the end zone. Touchdown, Kevin Marks. His first touch of the game, a 24-yard TD. Like we said, he's not in yet, but when he does, he's going to make him pay. And look at this explosion through the hole. I mean, this is what you call the wild man. He's going to be able to crease. He's going to give you the straight line of speed ability, and then he's going to finish off with some nice high step and even hit the gritty. That's been the dance of the season for a lot of guys. And, hey, when you're on touch like that, it makes <laughs> want a gritty too. Full disclosure, you've been doing it in the booth really this whole game. <laughs> <laughs>
glimpses of it. Our caps a five play drive Patterson and Marks the bulk of it extra point good for McNulty 21 nothing Buffalo as Kevin Marks punching it in for the ball Kevin Marks one of my favorite running backs just finishing in it and he's looked so smooth running through the offense line nobody around him finishes off with style points and the gritty that's what we want to see out here <laughs> we saw Patterson when he scored eight touchdowns against Kent State right to the bike <laughs> and now it's Kevin Marks after five plays 54 yards and a 24 yard score his fourth touchdown of the season and wearing number 41 it's hashtag all for one different player wears it every week in honor of the late former bull Solomon Jackson passed away in 2016 Marks gets the honor here today and takes advantage on this latest drive. 21 nothing Buffalo two on the ground one a block field goal return to the house by Hill another kickoff for McNulty shallow Jeremiah Knight coming up to field it and he brings it out to the 28 yard line that's where Akron's going to start back to the touchdown what I like so much about this play is that just look at the movement of the offensive line as we run it you're going to see this play develop as they go and what I love the most is just if you stop it right there you see that hole that we talked about we got the Mack truck the dump truck and all types of trucks running through those holes and it leaves you one-on-one -on -one with that safety and that's the run game that you want you want your guys like Kevin Marks and Jared Patterson on safeties and corners like that to make the one-on-one -on -one tackles and we know for sure they're not bringing these guys down with one-on-one -on -one tackles and once you do that with an offensive line you can secure the first half of the defense and you get up to that second level this touchdowns all day baby and there's Andy Cobble Mickey his sixth year on the Buffalo staff came over with Lance Leipold from Whitewater and D3 Akron first down to the outside pass complete to Nate Stewart and there's Hale to bring him down picked up a yard maybe two on first down and that'll bring up second down for Gibson Redshirt freshman quarterback from Georgia. You know, Tom Arthur was at Chattanooga for a couple of years, recruited Gibson hard out of Johns Creek High School in Georgia. Stayed in touch with his family, took the Akron job, and Gibson signed on as well. They picked up three. Good spot, second and seven. Fake the give, look over the middle again at Stewart, and right down to the turf at the 40 yard line but this will move the sticks first down for Akron. I know the score doesn't it quite reflect what's been going on in this game but the one thing I can say is that Zach Gibson and his ability to stay calm amongst what's going on and still make plays with his decision making being on point just shows you why they're going to stick in this game and hopefully make some big explosive plays later in the game as well. Already 59 yards passing for Gibson. And this is Jeremiah Knight to the 45 Corey Gross meets him for Buffalo with a big kit to make sure that Knight didn't get any more on that run up the middle. Yo, yeah, we got to talk about this hit right here. Just that's how you lower the shoulder, you drive the legs, and you finish with the power driver. That's what I like to see from safeties and second level guys because you don't really get to see too many big hits on that level. They've described him, the Buffalo staff, as a thumper. He hits hard. Knight once again. And he stopped in his tracks among those on the tackle the big fella number 90 George Wallow he's been a real surprise freshman from Columbia Maryland Brian Borland defensive corner coordinator telling us during the week Malik that he didn't expect that Wallow would get this many snaps he's been that good. Oh yeah, when you got a freshman like that coming in with such immense talent and the size he has, he's going to find a way to get on the field somewhere and make a play. And you know, even though he's that big, it's hard to block a guy like that. Just one third down conversion so far for the Zips. And Knight stopped shy of midfield. Eddie Wilson was there. And I don't think they got it. They needed to get to the 50. And again, a decision here at midfield for Tom Hart's team. 
Will they go for it or punt down by 21? I'm a little surprised they didn't go with Dollard on this third down. You know he's going to be able to push through because a guy like Eddie Wilson is will shut the door on those type of inside runs. But I'm trusting Zach Gibson in this situation to potentially get an RPO. You know the defense of Buffalo is going to show you a quarters look. They don't bring a lot of pressure. So you have to be smart in this decision making right here. Don't take too much of a uh, risk, but you want to take what the defense gives you right here. I, I believe they're going to call a great play for him to get something open in the flat. No, they stick with Knight in the backfield, and they just call timeout before the play clock expired. 30 second, charge timeout. Akron, their first to of the half. Draw the Bulls offside. Leaves each team with two timeouts remaining. You can tell they were going to go with a motion by Stewart to try to catch the defense off balance, get it, get the ball going so you can roll to him, hit him on something on two yards, and he can turn it into a first down. That's a very safe and, and smart call by the offensive coordinator and this Akron football team because they want to continue to move the rock. You don't have to do anything complicated, but just do the right and the simple things to execute on, and you'll be able to move these chains against a team that's not going to give you a lot. You can see why. Buffalo doesn't need to blitz that much. <laughs> you have Wallow, Wilson, Koontz, Michelle is a hard hitter. Yeah, those guys move furniture for sure, and they definitely move furniture in those trenches. It makes it hard to get combo blocks on guys like this because they're literally handling guys with one hand and a free hand to make a tackle on the ball carry. Was it college guys moving stuff? <laughs> yeah, we got we call the big guys. They move furniture. You know, those are, those are the big guys. All right, fourth down. Boogie Knight trying to bounce it outside, met by Wallow and dropped shy of midfield and a stop on fourth down for Buffalo. They'll get it back on the turnover on downs. Wallow coming through and it just shows you just how dynamic and side to side of the speed that he has because it's hard to find vertical creases in against this defense because they're only bringing four and those guys move side to side with speed. Look at this, Eddie Wilson making it tough in the backfield and then Wallow finishing off. This is the defense that is stout, aggressive, and they're not coming to play games. Well, tomorrow noon Eastern, we switch over to the hardwood non-conference battle between Rhode Island, the Rams, and Western Kentucky. Catch it all at noon on CBS Sports Network. And the gritty guard from Philadelphia, Fats Russell, leading Rhode Island into that matchup with the Hilltoppers. I love the name, Fats Russell. It definitely describes Philly in every sense of the word is grit, and that's what I want to see move forward. How about this, Malik? Ball State down 27-13, wins it over Western Michigan. Mac title game set next week in Detroit, Friday night. Buffalo and Ball State. And Patterson breaks free. Will he get there? Two men on him. Finally dragged down at the 10-yard line. Arslanian in hot pursuit, as was 2-2. Daraniho, Jared Patterson. If you blink, you might miss him. 41 yards. I'm changing his name to Mighty Mouse. Just look at the ability to find these creases, jump cut, stay on his feet, and then you just see the speed. It changes the angle of the defenders, and it takes two people to get him down from chasing him from behind. And this is what makes him so special. Just that quick little movement. That's what they call the sweet feet. JP, sweet feet. And then he's able to finish those runs second level. I mean, this kid is special. There's no reason why. There's a, no wonder why he has 15 carries right now in the game. Tight end shift. First and goal from the nine. Patterson once again. And there was Brandon Bischoff, one of the inside linebackers, able to slow him up. But Patterson with that run, over a thousand yards again all three years 1016 and now one of 12 guys in history malik to reach a thousand yards in five games unbelievable just imagine what it would be like with a full season of jared patterson in this run game especially with those offensive line they've been a, doing a great job of staying healthy but just expand that over five more games this man is making history each and every game long way to go 8.30 left in the second quarter. Patterson up the gut, picks up four. Bryce Wilson wearing zero. Among those to slow him up, third and goal coming up for Buffalo from the five after Patterson picked up four more yards. 
is probably why it's so awesome to play in a, in a running back room with this Buffalo offense because, like we saw from Kevin Marks, he gets in one play, scores a 40-plus yard touchdown, and he's only had one carry the whole time. So when you got a guy like J.P. getting majority of the carries, you know when you come in, you're going to be that one-off that may explode and, and bust for a big play. From the five, Patterson with 96 yards already today. Toss to him. Patterson is in. Standing up. His second touchdown. He's over 100 once again. And the Bulls extend the lead. It's 27 nothing. This is exactly what overwhelming offense can be when you're playing against Buffalo in this run game. Just look at the blocks all at the second level, clearing the way. And once you, once Patterson reaches that level, it's, it's going to be hard to tackle him with arm tackles when you're getting, getting trying to get guys off of you with the blocks. I mean, they're putting it together very efficiently on offense and making it tough for this Akron team to be on the field for 10-plus plays down the field. It's amazing. He scored at least two touchdowns in all five games this season and McNulty still perfect he's made all 33 of his PAT tries but this man Malik in the end zone again when you got a guy like Patterson as a coach I can go to sleep at night knowing I can just turn around and hand the ball off to a guy like this special just special not bad right Five games, over 1,000 yards, 12 guys have done it. When you join Sanders, Ricky Williams, Marcus Allen, here in Heisman territory, that's as good as it gets for Jarrett Patterson. Now gets a break. He has two touchdowns here today in the rain. With numbers like these, he deserves a trip to New York because this is this is uncommon. That's, 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 those stats right there just show you he puts himself in company with Hall of Famers in the NFL. That's the type of talent we're dealing with when we talk about Jerry Patterson, and he makes it count each, each and every game. And it's only been five games. That's crazy. There's McNulty to kick it away once again. Boogie Knight trying to let it go. Almost took a Buffalo bounce. Finally touchback to bring it out to the 25. Well, Patterson, a couple of weeks ago, the eight touchdowns, and afterwards, the guy who he's compared to most, Barry Sanders, the tweet, hey, don't sleep on this guy. He looks really good. He looks really good because he looks really like Barry Sanders. I think he's just saw himself in a younger, for, uh, younger version in Buffalo, and he just got to appreciate talent when you see it. And I think Barry Sanders, if anybody knows what good talent looks like. Jared Patterson, 14 touchdowns in the last three games. I mean, you need a math major in the booth <laughs> to digest the numbers because they're new ones every week. Jeremiah Knight in the backfield. Dollard is still on the sideline for Akron. We'll keep an eye on him and his status here going forward. Well, the former Cowboy and the Heisman winner in 1988, Barry Sanders, over 2,600 yards rushing in that amazing Heisman season, 37 touchdowns, and they didn't count the bowl games back then in terms of season statistics. He went for even more in the Holiday Bowl against Wyoming, and there's still many in Oklahoma who say, oh, you've got to count these too. <laughs> Straight talent. I just love to see that. And to see a replication of that is even more important. It's Gibson to throw. Was hit as he throws. That pass was knocked away by a pre-Washington intended for Sean Name as the Bulls once again bring in the pressure. That's going to bring up third down. Zach Gibson is good with his feet, gets the ball out, didn't get a chance to really step through, but when you have a four-man rush like that coming at you, the best thing you can do is throw the ball away from the defense. Maybe if he threw it a little more outside to keep that inside uh, corner from making a play, but still, when you're under duress like this with four guys, it's going to be tough to be able to be super accurate, as, as especially accurate as you want to be down in these positions like this. Zips and struggled on third down. A third and eight from their own 27. Inside blitz coming. Gibson avoids it at first, but no one downfield. And he's finally dropped. He had the whole defensive line there in the mix. And finally, Wallow got to him. And that'll ring on the punting unit again for Akron. Wallow is bringing the pain today. 
and it's putting a lot of pressure on Zach Gibson when you're losing the one on ones like this and you don't have a lot of time to buy and when you got everybody converging on you it just makes it tough and that's why this Buffalo defense doesn't blitz a lot is because they can rely on this front four to be aggressive tenacious and they get after that quarterback. Another pending situation here for Kyle Romnick and Cook he is back for Buffalo for time receiving the punt. Cook gets a big block, runs into his own man, and Ron Cook to the 47 again. Terrific field position to start this next drive for Buffalo. Gibson will get on the horn, pulls up big. In the second quarter, Buffalo on top of Akron, 28 to nothing. As we take a look at the college football playoff poll, powered by Ram Trucks, Alabama, again winning big today, Malik, 52 to three against the Crimson Tide, and your school, Notre Dame, your schools, we should say, Florida too, right there in the mix as well. That's right. That's right. That's what you love to see. Notre Dame in a great position to go against a very talented Clemson team, and then of course, hopefully, Florida can. Think of something to play good against this Bama team that is obviously steamrolling in themselves. But, you know, a lot of games left to play, a lot of football left, and this college football playoffs, even though the season hasn't been what we expected, is still very exciting for its finish. Patterson, 105 yards, 123 away from the three game record. Barry Sanders, 937, over three games. In 1988, this is Kevin Marks, untouched. Marks high steps up the sideline, and he's finally knocked out of bounds. He has a 24-yard touchdown today, and we're in number 41, has a gain of 34 on this run. Oh, man, this offensive line does a great job of just washing everybody out of the way. And then you got the wild man, Kevin Marks, making plays and has defenders uneasy because they don't know if he's going to run them over or run past him. He chose to take the lighter route and run around him and still make big gains. It's the second carry, and he looks like he's on his way to having a big day himself. I mean, there was nobody on Akron who got a hand on him <laughs> until he got to the boundary. This offensive line is greatly compared to a Notre Dame offensive line that I was very familiar with, with guys like Ronnie Stanley and Mike McGlinchey. Their ability to just be so together on these run on these run fits is just amazing to watch. Marks again. Marks breaks a tackle. One more time. Marks touchdown. Buffalo, his second of the day. There was 24 yards earlier. This time from 23. Three carries, two touchdowns. He's making it look easy. He, I'm telling you what, Jared Patterson and Kevin Marks has to take this offensive line out to not only a shopping spree, but we want the buffet, we want the everything included because this, this team is special in the run game and it just shows what the effort looks like from not only the running backs, but those guys up front as well. Highest scoring offense in the country, Buffalo. They punched it in four times, plus a block field goal for a score. 35 0 here in Western New York with 5.05 left before the break as we go to New York City. Brent Stover for a Papa John's update. Guys, the winner of Western Michigan and Ball State faces Buffalo in the MAC title game next week. The Cardinals came from 14 down in the fourth to take a three point lead. Broncos in desperation mode, zeros on the clock. It's an illegal forward pass, though. The play kept going for a touchdown miraculously, but the officials going to get together. Penalty was called, touchdown negated, all heck breaking loose. Ball State, gentlemen, will play Buffalo for the MAC title next week. Oh, Brent, thanks so much. Unbelievable action on the final day of the regular season. But just like in 2008, when Buffalo won their only MAC title, it's going to be the Bulls and Ball State once again. Well, whoever's playing Buffalo in that MAC championship should be worried about this run game and worried about just how explosive they can be at a moment's notice. They can have 14 play drives or four play drives doing the same type of things on the offensive side of the football. Makes them a complete team to go against. Boogie Knight will bring it out. Looks like a missed assignment. Hesitates. Knight still going. Will come back. And finally brought down 
from behind near midfield. That's where Akron will operate as Caleb Tate finally wrestled down. Yep, he's got the B night. Jeremiah Boogie Knight. Let's go back to the return. Boogie Knight was on his boogie right here, being able to be patient, round and uh, round the curve, and just make some guys miss. This is the type of field position that you want or for this Akron offense not to start too close to your own touchdown. Give him some breathing room and Zach Gibson to go back out there and do his thing. Obviously, Buffalo 105 from Patterson, 77 rushing yards from Marks, the top tandem in the conference, each with two touchdowns today. So Gibson and the Akron offense back to work off the play fake. He flips it and incomplete intended for Sean May. So Malik, it's the Cardinals and the Bulls next Friday night in Detroit for the MAC championship. But if you go back to 2008, Buffalo won that year against Ball State. And the similarities are Ball State was a team that came and ranked at the time. Right now, Buffalo is number 24 in the country, first time in the AP Top 25 in school history. And Ball State had to beat Western to get into that championship game. <laughs> they get the Broncos again at a wild finish. Crazy how history repeats itself. Second and 10. Gibson flushed. But tuck it and slide. And just across midfield. Well, the Cardinals opening loss to Miami of Ohio. But they've won five in a row. They lead the all-time series against UB. And these teams haven't seen each other for a long time. Got to go back to 2017 when the Bulls got the best of them against Ball State. Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I love this Ball State team for the fact that they was able to start slow but been finishing hot, especially coming back with just an amazing win against Western Michigan. They put themselves in position to be the biggest competition for this Buffalo team heading to championship. No, no update yet on Tion Dollar, but you saw him on the sideline. He is done for the day. Helmet off, pads off as well. And Gibson, nowhere to go. Brought down at the 41 yard line. They brought the house, and Gibson had no chance. And the punting unit coming on again for the Zips. It's tough when you have a young offensive line. You only have one or two reads, maybe, before you have to be able to get yourself out of danger. Zach Gibson is doing a great job of trying to stick in there, but at the end of the day, when you're facing just a four-man rush, it's going to be tough to really find ways to go. Oh, you see the boot on the lower left leg of Tion Dollard. Seven carries, 25 yards, but his day cut short in Akron's final game this season. Fair catch called for Cook holding on to it as he falls to the turf. But obviously, Dollard, what a year it's been. Florida native, junior college transfer, eighth in the country, coming in with 128 yards per game. His day is done. Well, coming up at the break, a Verizon halftime report. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Kevin Carter. They'll get you all caught up with the latest scores and news in college football, plus highlights from West Point, Army, Navy on CBS. It's all coming up on the Verizon halftime report. I mean, it's not in Philly. It's not in Baltimore. <laughs> on the banks of the Hudson in West Point. You, you, you just you can't ask for anything more special in what's been such a hard 2020. Oh, man. Hard 2020. Both Marks and Patterson in. This is Marks up the middle. And you just see that burst. When he gets linear, it could be over for the defense. And Marks close to a first down as Arslanian got him for the Akron Zips. What I love so much about this offense is that look, just look at the relationship between Kevin Marks and Jared Patterson. Those guys are like brothers from another mother. They do a great job of being able to stay together. Bryce Wilson down for the zips. And that is Bryce Wilson, the sophomore from Lilburn, Georgia. Nose tackle is down for Akron. A big game last year against Buffalo. A couple of tackles and a forced fumble. And we'll see how he does back on his feet. And you can see here's Tom Arth, head coach of Akron, taking a look as well. And yeah, now what you want to see is he has to be helped off late in the second quarter in Buffalo. 
it's definitely tough when you have such a dominant run game you're bound to get rolled up on in the back end or the front end at some point because those guys are just running and they're pushing and moving people out the way and you got to be able to keep your feet if you don't want to get it rolled up on like our guy did right here now a lot of people are thinking it's three minutes left if I'm the Buffalo offense I just want to be able to run this four minute offense and 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 be able to be efficient. That's one thing that they want to do on offense, especially from the quarterback position, is be efficient, give what the defense takes them, but also be able to uh, be able to push this time all the way out. Marks in, Marks got to the second line, and Bubba Arslanian, last line of defense, able to bring him down. It's another big first down run for Kevin Marks. Two touchdowns here on the day. Ed Cohen, Malik Zaire, our entire CBS Sports Network crew with you from Buffalo. Just look how aggressive Kevin Marks running through the hole. It's like he's one of the few running backs that embrace the contact. He's looking for guys to bang against because he's really a physical back. He does have that Alvin Kamara number 41. He's playing like a lot like him. If he catches some <laughs> passes, I mean, he might have to try out for the team next year. Who knows? Play clock coming down. Patterson to the outside and not much there rather marks and late flag on the play here with 207 left well you aren't not going to find many teams at this level the group of five with two running backs this good and this utilized let's get the call from David Siegel holding offense number 17 10 yard penalty repeat first down that's the wide receiver, Bernard Porter. You know, we talk about the effort from everybody on this team in the run game. Porter got a little too hands. He can't put the hands around the shoulder pads. Got to get inside that thing and drive him on out. But it just shows you just how important that blocking is to not only the linemen, but to those guys on the outside as well. Yeah, this group has not allowed a sack in eight straight games. When you run the ball like they do and you get it away quickly, so hard to stop. Kevin Marks he is brought down past the 30 yard line. Corey Thomas, one of the safeties for Akron, with the stop. And they complement each other so incredibly well. You're not going to find many teams with these two. And this is the run of their attack. It's amazing just to see the relationship, just the leadership from both of these guys. You see Kevin Marks wearing 41 all for one, and then Jared Patterson being the dynamic player that he is, but still being very humble and a great teammate to the guys in the room. He's really pushing the effort and the intensity and competitiveness, but they're staying together, and that's what you love to see on this football team. Marks again out to the 40-yard line of both Marks and Patterson are over 100 yards. It's no surprise when we saw on that graphic earlier, 323 yards rushing on average for Buffalo. That is second most per game in the country to Air Force. And you go back to the Kent State game, Malik, I mean, 515. Patterson with 409, 515 one game. It's hard to get 515 in three or four games, let alone the one game that they was able to put this together. But the talent level, I mean, you look at just the physical stature of these guys. These aren't guys that are playing with other guys. These are grown men out there on this offensive football team. It's Marks. Took it left. And he has stood up. 21 seconds. Fourth down coming up. I'll we'll see if someone takes a timeout. Looks like they will to freeze the clock with 17 seconds remaining. 30 second charge timeout. Akron, their second and a half. Please so the, the game clock to 20 get seconds. The ball back. Late first half in Buffalo. So the Bulls punting unit back on with Evan Finnegan. 20 seconds left in this second quarter. It's been all Buffalo. Dead Cohen, Malik Zaire with you. Entering the top 25, number 24, coming into the week as Finnegan lets it fly. And Knight will call for the fair catch. Akron with 15 seconds to work with. Remember, Buffalo will get the ball to begin the third quarter. Bulls on the run, and they have been on the run and some in this first half. 
Oh my goodness, just look at these. Jared Patterson with 16 rushes, Kevin Marks with half of the carries, but they're still being able to make impacts in triple digit numbers in the yards rushing in the first half, two touchdowns apiece. I mean, you can't be more complimentary than this graphic right here. I mean, these guys literally are hand in glove. They're perfect fit for this running back room. It makes it really easy for Coach Leipold and this offense to do what they do best, that's score points. Actually did a good job on Patterson first few drives, and he's still done that. <laughs> they zeroed in on him, no question. A dollar again is done for the day. We saw the boot on his left foot, so it's Boogie Knight once again. Jordan Avisi there for the Bulls, and that should do it to close out the second quarter. Buffalo ball to begin the second half. Here in Buffalo, the defense getting it done. Special teams touchdown, four on the ground, 35 nothing. College football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Home Depot. Start of the third in Buffalo. It's been all bowls. 35 nothing. They lead Akron here in Western New York. As we welcome you back inside, Ed Cohen with the former Notre Dame quarterback Malik Zaire. Before we break down why Buffalo is ahead by the five scores, let's go back to Tion Dollard. We saw him on the sideline with a boot on his left leg. Watch Dollard number seven in white in motion in the backfield. And he comes up limping, non-contact injury. So his day obviously is done. And unfortunate news for Akron and Tion Dollard. On the other side, the Buffalo ground attack, Malik, as advertised in that first half. This is everything we expected from these two guys. Jared Patterson and Kevin Marks really showing just how special they can be, not only outside the tackles, but inside the tackles. As we take a look, Jared Patterson, nifty, shifty, making guys miss. Ooh, wee, ooh, wow, making the highlight plays and being a tough Runner. Look at that. Can't bring him down even with two guys, and he's just finishing plays to get in the end zone. That's what you love to see from such an all star in Jared. And then we get on Kevin Marks. I mean, this kid here is everything for the Buffalo future because not only is he running hard, he's running in open lanes with this offensive line that's providing so much cushion for him, and he's making it look easy. These two guys together are a dynamic duo. They're dynasty together, and I love to have them on any fantasy team. If, I, if college even had a fantasy team, I would love to have them out there because these guys are the definition of talent. Here are the fantasy numbers. Now the McDonald's first <laughs> half stats. Marks won 12 on the ground. Patterson 105. Two touchdowns for each and 233 total yards for the Buffalo offense here against Akron. And Bulls get the ball to begin this third quarter. Looks like Patterson is getting the protection from the rain on the sideline. And Marks, all indications are he is going to be the feature back to begin the third quarter. And Marks didn't score until the Bowling Green game a couple of weeks ago. He's going to return this kickoff to begin the third quarter. And he's met at the 15, and he is dropped. And that's where the Bulls will begin this opening drive of the third quarter. Last four possessions, three of them ending in touchdowns. With the amount of yards they're running this game, they might be two sport athletes at the school of Buffalo, one being the track team and then the other being on the football team. The amount of yardage they've been able to amass, it just shows that the offensive line is doing their job on the front end. They're taking care of the business on the back end, and that's what makes this team so unstoppable in the run game. And this is someone maybe we haven't talked enough about. Lance Leipold's quarterback, Kyle Van Treese, got the great offensive line in front of him. And this is Marks, finds the hole, avoids a tackle. Little spin. And Marks with the first down run. This is quite a group in front of this guy. And if you're Van Trees and you have the two great running backs, the key is not making mistakes. And he has it. One pick. It's thrown for five touchdowns and 60% completion percentage. They believe after he won the quarterback competition, he's the right guy for this offense. He definitely took command in the right time, and he was in the right place to be, not having any sacks and being able to still compete the football at a high level. I mean, you just shows that when a quarterback has some surrounding pieces, he can really flourish in an offense like this. Oh, flags, whistles all over the place. And before the opportunity for Trevor Wilson. Ball start, offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's Jake Klink, the right guard 
from nearby Pittsford, New York. Tom Arts, Akron Zips. They've already given up more on the ground in this game than they've averaged in terms of their run defense all season. But that's what happens when you face a team like this in Buffalo. When you have some all-star running backs like that, it's going to be hard to limit them to any amount of rushing attack. Please start the game clock on my signal. And that was a concern for Lance Leipold coming into this game because Akron came off such a huge win last week against Bowling Green. First under Tom Arth, ended the 21-game losing streak. This is Marks up the middle, has a seam, will cut back, and finally dropped in pursuit was Julian Richardson, the outside linebacker. But for Buffalo, the key was getting off to a fast start given the emotion of Akron, and Marks has helped that today. And that double guard, that double guard pull to be able to seal the edge so allowing Marks to get a free lane to the second level of the defense, and he's going to do what he does best in making guys miss and making it hard for him to come down it just shows that this is a special team. But we talked to Andrew Konecki, the offensive coordinator for the Bulls, and the one thing he talked about was his receivers and that the attention to detail that his receivers have is something that's special considering they don't get the ball a lot. Marks again. Stiff arm into the face of A.J. Watts and just shy of midfield. So we're seeing a little more Ron Cook featured with Marks on this opening drive of the third quarter with Jarrett Patterson currently on the sideline. The amount of success that they're having, you would imagine that this could affect recruiting moving forward in mm -hmm. terms of all-star running backs, five-star running backs looking to go to a place like Buffalo just to see the production, not only from one guy, but from two guys being together that they're making it work. I mean, 5,000 yards between the both of them is something special that any recruit watching wants to be a part of. Fake the give, and Trees, tons of time. He's looking deep. Wilson's open in stride. He's got him for the touchdown. And Buffalo strikes in the air off the play fake, and they extend the lead. That's what you call unstoppable. The play fake drew all the defenders hard into the outside zone action. Kyle Van Trees is standing along cooking barbecue. Got all the time in the world to throw that pass right where he was supposed to. The, the key of this play was the ball placement. Throwing it to where the offender is going, making it easy for the receiver to run through the ball and get a touchdown right over the defender's head. That's what makes Kyle Van Trees special because he is the X factor when you take away that run game. 52-yard strike. And Wilson with his second touchdown. Another extra point is through for McNulty of Antrese. One of the two games when his running backs went for 16 touchdowns on the ground. He goes to this guy, Wilson and the Bulls, feeling good in Buffalo. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? by Nicolo Boltra, who reminds you to enjoy responsibly. And by Casper, your one-stop shop for all things sleep. Malcolm Coots, Bulls defensive end, the fourth Buffalo player invited to the Senior Bowl. He'll be there in 2021. The first was Jerry Philbin, part of the Jets, 1969 Super Bowl winners. And there is Coots. 42-0. It's been all bowls. And Akron will start at the 25. Well, Malik Zaire, I know you can appreciate great routes. Big strikes from Kyle Ventries. This is what I love. When you have running backs like Kevin Marks and Jared Patterson, you're threatened by the secondary to be able to respond to the run. They, these two are the reason why this play happened. Torrey Wilson was able to get behind him on a post route, and you can't fall asleep at the wheel. 18, you can't run up on the run fake. And 24, you got to back up. You got a guy that fast running behind you on the post. You stand no chance. And Kyle Ventries does what he does best and let it fly. Number seven, he's doing a good job today keeping the defense honest. That's what you're supposed to do when every Everybody is triggering on the run game. Only six passes in the first half. You're not expecting that to even happen. So when it does, it, it results in big plays. And the big strike from Van Trees, six touchdowns to the air this season. First since he went for four against Miami of Ohio in week two. And this is Jeremiah Knight up the gut. Wallow with the tackle. Again, we mentioned Tion Dollar, non-contact injury. Done for the day. And Coons, I mean, he 
embodies what this Buffalo front is all about. He's from Westchester, New York, Peekskill, went to Archbishop Stepanak High School, which is in White Plains. And Brian Borland, defensive coordinator, describes him as a lights-out player. And he's not just a guy who stops the run. I mean, he can really get to the quarterback. Universally talented. That's what we like to call that guy. Knight slips. Oh, he is frustrated, pounding the turf. And it brings up third down. Malik Reese spoke to the Akron staff just about the move of Knight, one of their featured receivers, and they shifted him to the backfield. Certainly a need there. You see that end some here today without Dollard now. And you can see he's still trying to get his feet under him, working in that new position at running back. He's getting the ball a lot quicker than he usually would on the outside as a receiver. But the good thing is he's able to play both positions, and his toughness and his size is going to complement him and transition into the running back. Third and five. From the Akron 29. Pressure coming. Gibson got her away quickly. Nice catch with the hands. Now to the 40 yard line. Nate Stewart, the senior from Bethlehem, PA. And oh, Gibson looking right away at the sideline. He is in pain for Akron. Pretty devastating hit when you're not looking. These are the worst hits as a quarterback because it's not so much as the tackle, but it's the 200 plus pound guy falling on top of you. That's something that's gonna hurt when he, it's something sometime in tomorrow, but he's a tough kid in himself. So hopefully he can shake that off and come right back out. So they turn to TJ DeShields, a sophomore from Beloit, Ohio. So you have a backup quarterback, backup running back. In for Akron, and this is their third running back, John Zell Norrells, and he is taken down by Isaiah King. As we look at TJ DeShields pressing to action here in the final game for the Zips here in 2020. This is definitely something Akron did not plan for, having their quarterback out and their starting running back out. This is something that they're going to have to adjust to on the fly and just be able to still plug and play. You want to be able to have guys to plug and play and just to continue to move the ball. It's going to be a lot tougher with your backups in at your best and most critical positions. Give up the gut. Gage Norrells once again with an extra push out across the 45-yard line. So we're talking about young quarterbacks at Gibson and now DeShields. This offensive line, Malik, features not one, not two, but four freshmen blocking for Gibson and company. And it's a young group that Tom Arthur and his staff hope will grow together. Got a long way to go. When you have a team, especially offensive your line, this young, the hope is for the future and that they come become a more cohesive group, especially with a quarterback that's young himself. They're going to have a lot of synergy moving forward, but this is what you call growing pains. Third and two, the shields to the outside, incomplete. Tony Grimes has had a really good season. Part of the reason why they moved Knight to the backfields because of Grimes' emergence. Incomplete, and once again, they'll bring on the punting group here for the Zips. I do like the confidence in DeShields throwing that ball, putting it right where he was supposed to be, and give him a chance to continue and have yards after the catch. Uh, it's, it's surprising that they didn't get that off, but, you know, it's just stacking the chips and stacking the plays together and finding that cohesiveness and execution that this offense really deserves. Kyle romanek has been busy. His sixth punt. This is a good one. Pushes Cook back. Near the 10, Ron Cook escapes the tackle. And finally met at the 38-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Here at 9.26 to go in the third quarter. Buffalo Bulls averaging almost 51 points per game. Highest scoring team in the country. And right now sitting on 42. And the indication there may be a block in the back on the return. During the return, legal block in the back, receiving team number four. Penalty is half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Can't do that. You know, if you get, ever have to put your hands up in the air like you free, that's not a good opportunity, but good, good offensive movement coming out. 
for Pound is brought to you by Road Fitness. A look inside the Buffalo offensive line. You really can't draw it up any better than what they're able to accomplish from executing outside zones to double pulls to anything that seals the deal for these running backs to hit the next level. This offensive line has been able to accomplish winning their one-on-ones, making it tough for the defenders at the second and third levels to make a play on the running back. I mean, this is the perfect execution by offensive line that's being super aggressive throughout this whole game so far. Offensive coordinator Andy Kotelnicki, you see him there. The mask offensive line coach is Scott Fuchs. And they're going to block for a new quarterback, Matt Myers. His third appearance of the year, the sophomore is now in. And gives it up the gut. Arsladian with the tackle. This is Ron Cook, so no Marks and no Patterson with 9.13 to go in the third quarter, and the Bulls comfortably in command of this one. This is really good for Coach Lance Lipo for him to be able to get his depth some action tonight. For them to have a whole half to be able to really flex their muscles. They've been sitting on the bench uh, all season being able to support their guys, but now it's their time to shine, and let's see what the depth of this Bulls offense really has. Myers was the incumbent. He started the first five games last year and then injured his neck. Ended his season. That's when Van Trees emerged. How about Cook? Escapes one. Trying to escape a second tackle. It was a foot race up the sideline. And he's finally taken down by my Jaden Horton. After 17 yards, picked up on the outside by Ron Cook, the sophomore from Washington, D.C. Seems like we're finding the, the third head to the three-headed monster right here with Ron Cook just looking no different and losing no pace to what these running backs have been able to accomplish today. I mean, Ron Cook looks like a smaller Jerry Patterson just dropped the six, and now you got Ron Cook. He's number two. And for his ability to just continue this, this plethora of availability for these running backs, it's just awesome to watch. You saw Van Trees final numbers, four of seven, and the 52-yard strike to Trevor Wilson, his final pass. Pitch to Cook, had a hole, and taken down by Corey Thomas. So Myers, he lost the competition coming into camp to Van Trees after Van Trees lost out to Myers to begin 2019. And for Myers, local kid from West Seneca, it's always tough when you uh, lose these quarterback battles because when you do, you have to sit the entire time. Yeah. And when your team is good, it's hard for you to ever get that chance to really plug yourself back in and, and make people remember that it was a competition before it ended up being what it was during the season. Second and six. Shy of the 34-yard line. A little confusion on the handoff. And Cook does not get much. Brought down by the MVP of this defense, Bubba Arslanian. Malik, for you, I mean, you get to Notre Dame and you suffer an injury early in your tenure. And when there is that injury and then there's a level of competition, how does that impact things for your career? Oh, man, you know, you're not in really too much of control of what happens once you get hurt in a situation like that. But the good thing is, is that being a good teammate means everything. And so to have the support of your guys around you and to make other players better while you may not be out there is what counts in terms of what the type of player you're made out of. And, and if you love the game of football, there's no way that you can't make an impact in some way. Uh, third and five, Myers slings it out. Nice catch with the hands. Again, it's Wilson had that big 52-yard touchdown. I believe they're about a yard short of the first down, but that was impressive by the redshirt freshman. Now, Wilson's a guy that the coaches are very high on in terms of his ability, not only in the speed department, but you can see he's got some hands with him, too. He may not be the tallest, but his impact on the outside as well as the deep threat gives this offense the ability to do whatever they want, whenever they need to. And that's what you want to see in this secondary group. You want to see these young guys start popping up and flashing on the film and on the field because this is good teaching tape for the, the next season to come for this team. Fourth and two, they'll go for it. Marks back in. Marks, he's got the first down. He's got more across midfield and wrestled down by A.J. Watts. I mean, you can on Cook. And then this guy comes back in, gains 18 yards, and they move the sticks. 
you put Kevin Marks in there when you want to guarantee some first down yardage and his ability to go in there and still be fresh. I'm, I'm surprised he's not heading on the bike right now, but anything to continue these drives, and this is what makes this offense so special. They can put together a 14, 15 play drive, just nickel and dime you and, and, and wearing your defense down throughout this one drive so far, and it shows that it's hard to stop when you can't get them off the field in third down. First and 10. And this is Cook through the hole. Cook, they still going. You know, we talk so much about Patterson and Marks, but Ron Cook getting a chance. And you love to see when a guy's an underclassman takes advantage, 16 more yards on the ground for Cook. For all these underclassmen, just take advantage of the reps. You know, not too many times that you get in a season where you can, as a backup, get a chance to have a whole half to yourself. And these are the moments that you live for. You can go through all these tough practices during the season, tough scout teams that you're running for the other offense. And now you get a chance to put on the jersey that and really run and do the things that you've been wanting to do all season. And this is where you take advantage of that. It's going to give you the confidence from your coaches moving forward. And it's going to be able to flex your muscles a little bit. You want to see some of those yards, too. Now play fake. Myers to the outside, another completion and another tough catch. This time Bernard Porter, where Myers hadn't attempted a pass in his first two games off the bench this season. And he completes this one as they continue this eight play drive and they have not gone to Patterson yet here since halftime. And they'll move him back. Penalty here on Buffalo negates the catch by Porter. You almost want to decline a penalty like that because knowing the type of offense that you're playing, they're just going to chunk you and chunk you and chunk you and keep continuing to kill the clock when you really want to be able to put them in a position to get off the field. So if anything, this is just extending this long drive that is killing the time of possession for this Akron defense and really wearing them down as the, as the plays go on. Neither of these teams are penalized often. Akron, fourth fewest penalties per game as Cook is bottled up. Scott and Arslanian. Arslanian, number 27 for Akron and Malik. I mean, you talk about a guy who's all over the field. He can get to the ball, whether it's in the middle of the field, out in the secondary. I mean, he really is the heart and soul of this Akron club. I love watching him. He's the only player with his jersey all teared up, his shoulder pads all uneven because he's in the mix. And being at 5'9 and, and playing the whole game competitively is really good to see because he is that heart and soul. When you're looking around and the smallest guy is making the most plays, it's got to give you confidence to step your game up as well. Picked up two. Here's Marks. Already with two touchdowns here today. And Marks out near the 20 yard line. And Patterson just hanging down the sideline again. First half, 105 yards. So he's still 123 away from breaking Barry Sanders' record for three games. 937 on the ground. That amazing stretch to end the 1988 Heisman regular season. And we'll see if Patterson gets that chance with a long way to go under three to play in the third, but the Bulls comfortably in front by 42. If he does or doesn't, it's, he still deserves, in my opinion, that, that trip to New York for that Heisman. I mean, having a, a thousand yards in five games is something that's unheard of, and the ones that do do it are remembered forever in football history. Marks brought down low. Tackle at the legs by Horton. And today's red zone is brought to you by Verizon. And Buffalo, a couple of trips today, have punched it in. I mean, this has been the story for this efficient offense led by Van Trees. Bulls are 19 of 20 in converting red zone chances, all of them touchdowns. Wow. What you know about this offense is guarantees in life. It's guaranteed you're going to be taxed. It's guaranteed you're going to have a death at some point. And it's guaranteed that when they get in the red zone, they're going to score <laughs> this Buffalo offense. Dead taxes and the red zone for the Bulls. <laughs> I like it. That would have made Coach Kelly very happy, I'd imagine, back in the day in South Bend as Cook whittles his way inside the five here for Buffalo with 149 to go in the third. 
What I love the most watching this is if you just watch the offensive line, they're all in unison, they're all running with the running back, and then the best part about this is they're all coming to pick the running back up. So this just shows that they love their running backs, they care for their guys, and vice versa. I know the running backs are going to take care of this offensive line with maybe some go-karts or something extravagant at the end of this season because they've been putting in work for those guys to make those plays. Mike Nowitzki, the center, started every game, all 18 at Buffalo that he's appeared in. Fake the give. Myers standing up. Touchdown for the ball. So they run a little RPO that time. And it's Matt Myers with the touchdown. It's got to feel so good. Local oh, products lost the competition coming into camp and now into the end zone. Matt Myers said, let me get on some of that action. I want to get in that end zone, too. Know what it feels like to do the greedy or something like that. But, you know, Kyle Van Tree's looking on and be like, man, you can run, too. Who knew that? But it's good to see this offense find a way to have guys expand the field and be able to all get a chance to score touchdowns. It's going to be a fun week, at least for a few hours, in that room before they get ready for Ball State next week's MAC championship. 49-0. Buffalo this time the quarterback on the ground getting in for six Matt Myers in for Ventrice that's as good as it gets Bulls will be in Detroit next week for now a big on the zips tomorrow it's the NFL on CBS featuring Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs dueling with the Dolphins as well as Deshaun Watson and the Texans against Chicago we get your day started with JB and the guys in New Eastern on the NFL today. That's tomorrow. The NFL is on CBS. And seven teams in this year in 2020. Steelers for now the top seed, but it's going to be a fight, at least mathematically, for the final wild card spot. New England, of course, losing big against LA. One thing that is surprising seeing Cleveland in there. Cleveland <laughs> making a making a difference in this season with Baker and, and the guys that they have rolling in that up there in the in that in the Cleveland. McNulty tees it up, and this will go for a touchback. Well, spoken like a guy from outside of Dayton, Ohio. He's Malik Zaire. I'm Ed Cohen. Let's look at the total yards by comparison, and obviously the Bulls offense speaks volumes, highest scoring team in the country, and you can see what they do every game on the ground, and even opening it up with Van Trees and that big touchdown to Wilson today. I think we got a chance to see the complete offense of and the ability of this Buffalo offense to be able to have a lot of different options. I think that's the one thing that stands out about this team the most is that, yeah, we know about Jared Patterson, but if you go to sleep on Jared, you have Kevin Marks, you have Wilson, you have so many other different pieces with none that make plays for this offense. TJ DeShield stays in. Remember, Gibson hit hard. A previous drive to shields his second appearance this year throws low off the hands of Stewart and that is incomplete here with 110 remaining in the third quarter Akron zips you know great to come into a final game knowing it took care of business a week ago against Bowling Green their first win since 2018 for Tom Arth and his staff just critical I mean they hammer the recruiting trail in and around Canton and Akron young team and to finally get back in the win column. And like they told us, Malik, it wasn't just the offense, it was the defense, it was the special teams. Everybody played a part. The Shields hit as he throws, incomplete, got it away just in time to Tony Grimes. And that brings up third down. There he is, the former quarterback, was a legend at Division Three, John Carroll, and then Led his alma mater as head coach for four years before moving on to Chattanooga. Two years down in Tennessee, and now his second year leading the Akron Zips. What you can appreciate about Coach Arthur is that he gives the responsibility to his quarterbacks being a quarterback that you don't see a lot of check with me's where they're standing and looking at the sideline. He gives a lot of his ability and offensive tools to his quarterback to make the place and change the plays to put his offense in good position. And as you can tell, that's going to be good in the development of these guys. Third and ten. The shields flushed. Was just behind the line of scrimmage and got it away to Norrells, the freshman running back. That bring a fourth down. So how did Tom Arth celebrate that victory against Bowling Green? 
He took his five kids out. They they got ice cream. Oh man, they haven't had ice cream in a long time. <laughs> so I'm sure they probably got the triple and quadruple scoops because they had to celebrate such an amazing win for a team that overcome a lot in the last couple of seasons. Putting it back on, we've said Kyle Romick's name quite often. Freshman from Fort Mill, South Carolina, just south over the state line of Charlotte, and Cook. He is back to receive it. Calls for the fair catch just in front of the 25 yard line. Late third quarter of this one. Bulls in front of Akron. Now the Bulls on the run. Bulls on parade. However, you look at it, Marks and Patterson and Malik. It's been Marks especially, each with two touchdowns, but 182 on the ground. I think the important thing to realize here too is that they're both giving you two different types and sets of abilities. We know that Jared Patterson is going to be sweet feet JP moving in and out of the tackles and moving in and out of the offensive line. But then you got Kevin Marks on the other hand who's going to give you that explosion. He's going to give you that speed. He's going to give you that aggressiveness which makes it hard for a defense to gear for two different style of running backs because they're both effective behind such a great offensive line. And again we have not seen Patterson since halftime. It's been all Ron Cook and at times Marks. And again, it's Cook. Stiff arm, not much. Big tackle, Jameer Wade, freshman defensive tackle from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And Patterson still 123 yards shy of that three game record. Barry Sanders, 937 rushing yards over final three games of 1988. For now, it stands, and for now, it's all Buffalo. 49 nothing after three on CBS Sports Network. Football presented by Home Depot. The beats from Buffalo as we revisit our Ryan Keys to the game for the Zips and the Bulls, Malik. Well, it's been tough winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups, which has been the story of tonight, whether it's getting off of blocks or whether it's making blocks or making catches or making runs to get there. Protecting the football has been good, but it, they just haven't been on the uh, offense as much. And then for them on the uh, Buffalo, starting fast, of course, they started hot. And then last but not least, the special teams, they made a play early and made this a lot more complicated for Akron to come back. Ball sticking to the ground. It's Cook once again and a late flag. Heard the whistles and they were still trying to bring him down and finally a side judge let it fly. And we'll hear once again from our referee David Siegel here after the first play of the fourth quarter. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 67. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. That's Logan Hawkins, a sophomore. It's frustrating when you can't take these guys down one at a time, and, you know, they, they're so small and compact, they, they stay on their feet. So there's a little frustration in when you're tackling, especially how the game has been going, where they've been just going in and down and overwhelming these guys on every, each and every play. So, you know, you're going to have some of those, some of those frustration calls. I mean, first off, everyone gets a year of eligibility next year. You could probably count the amount of seniors on this Akron roster on two hands, maybe three. These guys are going to be back, and it's been a hard season. It's been a hard rebuild. And you know what? You're down 49-0. You're trying to bring a guy down. You're not giving up on the play. I think to some extent, if you're a coach, you say, you know what? Good. You guys finish this thing because we're just getting started. And talking to Tom Martin and his staff, you get the sense game by game, yes, they're building try to win games but they're also looking big picture absolutely and he and he stressed that a lot to us that they're not really competing against the other team they're looking to play for each other and, and find out who is competitive and who wants to work hard on that team to really stand out because a lot of this rebuilding process is about effort Myers still the quarterback for Buffalo 
Fake the give, he kept it himself, and Myers is off. He fooled the defense. Matt Myers to the end zone for the touchdown. Wow. Now, there's a flag on the play. Maybe it was too good to be true, but we'll see if it stands. If it does, 58-yard scamper for Matt Myers. Holding offense to the 74. 10-yard penalty, repeat, second down. Ben Spoger, the backup center. Oh, man, Matt Myers is what we have, the Jets. He had the Jets on this play, but you see the hold right here. He got a little bit too much. I don't know if I would call that, but Matt Myers did a great job of making somebody miss and then hitting the turbo. Look at that Nitro out running the corner and the safety, but you got to bring it all back, big fella. Let's see if you can do it again. Great read on the down man. He got a little bit too much. I think he got a little bit of the flop from the defender, but it was just a little too much, and the, and the referee had to call it. But Matt Myers is looking like the, the fourth running back <laughs> that this team is really coming out with, making plays. This offense, two tight ends, two running backs. Karan Robinson once again. And he was fought off by Michael Scott, number five for Akron. But you don't see teams that approach it every day like Buffalo does. I mean, it's old school to an extent when you can pound it with their running backs. Uh, it's a lot of fun to see, isn't it? It's really good to see these guys play together. Not only is the first unit playing together, but the second unit is playing together. Not only is the first starting quarterback playing great, the second starting quarterback is playing great. And that's just, you got to attribute that to Coach Lee Poe to his, his coaching ability and his experience that he brings to this team and it's a lot of maturity that you see on this team as well third and long after the holding penalty cook avoids one and out to the 40 yard line that'll bring on the buffalo punting unit but you know you look at a guy like van trice you include the seven attempts today he's attempted 85 passes for the season but amazingly Buffalo is third in the country in yards per completion. I mean, there's balance there, and there's good decision-making, and that goes back to the play calling and what they put in every week. 85 attempts just makes it more critical that your decision-making is on point because you don't have a lot of chances to make it happen, but when you do, most of those are touchdowns, and they result in big gains and big plays down the field. Shallow punts stepped over. And finally down at the 29-yard line, Jackson Balter. Now the punter for Buffalo. Zips will take the field once again. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Muscle Milk. With zero sugar and 25 grams of protein, Muscle Milk helps build muscle. By Road. Don't weaken. And by McDonald's. Now the Bulls and their division titles, Mac champs in 2008 against Ball State, and they'll face Ball State once again next week in the Mac championship. Last five years of the big observation, five different schools hoisting the trophy in Motown. The parity in this league on full display. That'll be Buffalo, Ball State coming up on Friday night. First pass from TJ DeShields is incomplete it's probably the most time they've had all night back in the quarterback pocket he didn't have the first read he circumnavigated to find the second read but he didn't have his feet in the right place to a guy who was who was open he's got to take advantage of uh, those situations right there if you want to continue to move those chains of course Akron trying to get to the discussion and the mid-american conference the big story here today number one Tion dollard first half Leaving the game with a non-contact injury. We saw him on the sideline. His left leg in a boot. Obviously done for the day and hopefully not big picture long term. This is Boogie Knight, Jeremiah Knight. But the carry out to the 30-yard line. So the Cardinals over Western Michigan earlier today. A thriller. Ball State down by 14 points. Comes back, takes the lead with a field goal. And a Cal Stanford Big game type play to end. It was called back for Western Michigan. Broncos follow the Cardinals, and it's going to be the Bulls and Ball State 
next week. I think a lot of why Jared is not in this game is because they, they know how important that MAC championship is next week, and they want him as fully healthy and, and, and as possible, honestly. And then you have Kevin Marks who's still putting in good work to be able to put these guys in position to finish the season off right. Down he goes to Shields, is sacked. And it's Kyler Lang who got to him. Redshirt freshman taking down the back of quarterback. Look at that tackle. Head around the shoulders and how you finish on a quarterback. You don't give him no chance to break out of that tackle. Great one on one matchup that he won. And as a freshman, that's what you want to see. You want to see some energy, especially on that defensive side of the ball, replacing a guy like Koontz and leading into next year. Now, Roman on for his eighth punt. This is similar to what Akron endured against their rival. Kent State a couple of weeks ago and before the punt looks like timeout is taken by the Bulls timeout. after Buffalo's Buffalo. fourth sack first of, the half. of the game. And there is Lance Leipold. Oh, the masked up Cardinals heading to Motown for that rematch against Buffalo and like so many teams Malik in this league high powered to say the least, winners of five in a row. The running backs in the MAC are the staple of the MAC. It's the reason why the MAC is so dominant. You got Ball State and their running back, as well as the, the stable of running backs that you have in Buffalo is going to be a great MAC championship matchup next week. And this is just fine tuning the details that we're seeing out here tonight. I know Coach Lee Pope wants to probably put some sequence of plays together to try to make it better for what they head into next week. This takes an accurate bounce. Out at the 36-yard line. Here in Western New York, the Bulls will take over on the verge of victory. Buffalo's rung up 49 points at 70 last game against Kent State. They lead Akron. Heisman hopefuls entering today. Oh, one of your former schools, Malik, Kyle Trask at Florida has been terrific. Mac Jones as well at Alabama Trevor Lawrence great numbers just not a ton of games because he was out with COVID-19. Well out of fairness I think Kyle Trask put in the most work out of the three and, and not only that his ability to raise the level of this team and this Florida team especially with a guy like Kyle Pitts out there they've been making able to make a lot of plays and hopefully make a chance for the playoffs. And the question is here in Buffalo as Cook takes the handoff and doesn't get much Bring up second down. What people are following is is Jared Patterson in the discussion because of what he's done a thousand yards, the eight touchdowns last week. I mean, there's a strong chorus of people who say, hey, if you're going to open up the ballot, some guys are available to go to New York, he should be right there. Well, in a season like this, the fact that he's able to put up the numbers that he has is just it's really special so if there was a Heisman to go to somebody other than a quarterback it would definitely be a Jared Patterson type of guy Trevor Bozitski in a quarterback this is Robinson will spin and finally is stood up as the whistles come in under 10 to play I'll bring up third down after he picked up the extra push and there are the Season numbers over only five games gets over a thousand only 12 guys have ever done that I mean eight yards per carry Unbelievable it's something unheard of. I mean, I remember Reggie Bush was about nine yards per carry in his one of his Heisman seasons But for Jared Patterson, like I said in a five game season for for COVID and everything to be happening For him to be able to be in that conversation if any point in Heisman history This would be a point for him to make in a case why he should be in New York Kaczynski fakes the give rolls out over the middle bobbled intercepted A.J. Watts with Akron's two picks this year. It was thrown to him last week by LeBron Davis at Bowling Green and right to him again, but he'll take it. A pick for the Zips, their sixth takeaway of the year. And there's that sign of hope that you need right there. What a way to not quit. Still continue to make plays with the scoreboard looking how it is, but we love the fact that they're not quitting on this Akron team, and what a great play to make to give you a chance for offense to make plays later on.
Now, coming up next, our full slate of college football continues as Boise State prepares to the Mount West title game against Wyoming. Catch it all right here on CBS Sports Network. Lake effect and wind. Here in Buffalo, as we look at the ground attack of the Wyoming Cowboys. Again, one of the better teams in the country on the ground. Not going to match Air Force in the Mountain West. For Wyoming and Boise, they are coming up. Ted Cohen, Malik Zaire, our entire CBS Sports Network crew here for Buffalo and Akron. TJ DeShields airs it out, almost had his man. Tony Grimes, the freshman, can't make the difficult catch. There's a flag on the play. And we await the call here from David Seaton. Holding offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. I'll back him up 10 yards. Let's take a look on the right side. Oh, he can't bring it. That's a complete takedown by the tackle, but that's the effort that you want. You want to keep your quarterback upright. You know you're facing a tough challenge in these, this Buffalo defensive line. I'll take that. If I'm the quarterback, thank you. You know, we'll, we'll take a penalty over me picking my mouthpiece up off the ground. <laughs> Sets him up for a first and 20. The Shields quick drop, and that's incomplete. You know, we saw the, the flags waving and the win here in Buffalo. I'm talking to Tom Arth leading up to this game. He said, remember that Bills-Colts game from a couple of years ago in the snow? LaShawn McCoy went off. He said, that's ideally what we want when we go to Buffalo. And sadly for him, yeah, there's been a little wind and a lot of rain, but it's 53 degrees. That's what it was, a kickoff, not exactly a snowball. Extreme weather conditions definitely would have played a factor in helping Akron in this one. Unfortunately, the football guys wanted to be a nice sunny day in paradise in Buffalo, New York. So it, it, it not end up looking too good for them right now. Fake the give. DeShields over the middle. Bobbled. Almost picked off just through the grasp of Dylan Powell, the junior safety. And the Bulls nearly forcing another turnover. Nonetheless, through the long coming up for the zips. Let's just see the hands of the defender and just the concentration that it takes to finish these type of plays. It's a reason why he plays defense because the hands aren't always there. But total ball destruction. You know, you got the ball out of the, the receiver's hands and had a chance to play some tip drill. But you got to come down with that if you want to have a chance to put your name in the stat book. There was a flag on the play. It was declined by Buffalo. Still a third and 20 now for DeShields. And yeah, flag was all the way downfield. Again, Zach Gibson leaving early in the third quarter after taking a big hit. And the big story for Akron, Tion Dollard out in the non-contact injury in the first half. Their star running back. This is John Zell Norrells. And Norrells guided out, but well shy of the first down by Brendan Pine. And a flag coming in late on the play. See if Norrells was already out of bounds before the hit. After the play, personal foul, defense, number 42, late hit out of bounds. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic, first down. Now those are the things that must drive a coach crazy. Pine pulling on his shirt and then an extra takedown. Yeah, when a guy that big you're trying to bring down, you're trying to do anything it takes. And even if it comes to him coming out of bounds and making the tackle is something that he wanted to finish as a job but you want to be able to play a clean game especially in the second half you don't want to be able to put yourself in a compromising position giving up free plays like that man in motion is Tristan Brank freshman tight ends seen more time recent weeks the shields makes the check to the outside it's Norrells with room and a sliding tackle at the legs stops him from potentially a touchdown that was Caleb Tate, but the move the sticks once again. You know, we talk about Buffalo's offense, and as we look again here at the 24-yard pickup for Norrells, 
This is what we call drill work by DeShields, being able to step up in the pocket, not panic, find his outlet, dump it down to guys that's going to make plays. I don't think DeShields wanted to carry that football, let his playmakers make the play, and as you can see, moving the chains. You stick into the routine, move the rock for these guys. From the 20. Akron trying to punch it in here in the fourth quarter. It's off the RPO, pass deflected, and it's incomplete. You know, Buffalo placing an RPO team for the second straight game. We know what Kent State can do, but Akron tries to disguise things as well, and the Bulls have been more than ready and speaks volumes about what they've been able to accomplish under Brian Borland, their defensive coordinator. The adjustments, being able to play simple as a defense, but make the adjustments to fit the, the, inef the insufficiencies that you have within your defense. It just comes down to the effort by the defensive players on that play. You see there's a lot of tip balls going on. The defensive line putting their hands up. These are the things that's going to slow down RPOs because they're so quick hitting. Nothing doing for Norrells. May have lost a yard. But Brian Borland, you know, Lance Leipold's been with him for a long time, going back to their days at Wisconsin Whitewater. They combined for six national championships. And Borland was there 21 straight years. That's a number of coaches. I mean, that's hard to do. And you have to be not just a good coach, but a, a halfway decent person. And he's a great guy to stay at one place that long. Oh, man, you're talking about tradition you're talking about sticking to it this is a guy that 21 years in he's probably haven't seen any and everything when it comes to playing defense and for these defensive guys to get all that wealth of wisdom is incredible sling it out knight to the 10 yard line jeremiah knight tackled by cj bazile now if i'm the akron offense i want to be able to accomplish a touchdown in this in this drive i want a touchdown i don't want to settle for three points because like you can tell you need all the momentum you can get and you need the encouragement as you can tell boogie trying to make plays boogie's making guys miss he's getting down on the boogie right there and trying to put anything he can in this offense to move these sticks it's fourth down i'm expecting the ball to go right back to boogie and for him to be able to come down with this first down let's see if they can convert on a fourth and one Norrells has the first down, and he's in. Touchdown for Akron. John Zell Norrells only had two carries all season coming into this one, and Akron avoiding the shutout. They are on the scoreboard with 6.05 to go. That's how you crease. You got a little pull by the offensive lineman right there, but it was just enough for our guy to sneak right through that and score a touchdown. This is good for this offense and Coach Arth to feel good about his team still fighting in a game that is clearly way past due. Uh, not bad from the shields a little over three minutes you come in and lead an eight play drive and Norris is someone who they really could feature in the future behind Tion Dollard extra point is good from Corey Smeagol and the zips punch it in here in the fourth quarter oh man as you can tell man he is gone but not forgotten these guys are still fighting to the end and that's what you want to see in a program that's still developing and building back Zips, eight plays, 58 yards, and it ends with Norrells from 11 yards out with the touchdown. Akron on the board in this final game for the Zips in 2020. Tom Hart's team picking up that desired first victory, ending the 21-game losing streak a week ago. Baby steps, but it's not easy for young guys to endure a rebuild, and yet it seems like everybody's on board. It definitely seems like it, especially because getting a win like last week is, is very emotional. You know, these guys went through so much in a 21-game losing streak, and to break that, it's a lot of carryover is looking like in this game as well. Jerry Fiction with the kickoff. The big leg sails out with the win behind them for a Buffalo touchback. Our player of the game brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. And 
like a season achievement award because Patterson reaching a thousand yards in this one today. JP Sweetfeet is always coming through with the explosive plays, with the tough, hard yardage inside the tackle, outside the tackle. He's been doing it all season, and in five games, they have a thousand yards. He's the MVP of not only the season, but he has some contention to win some bigger awards at the close of this mark as well. Hasn't played since halftime. Twelfth player to get to a thousand in five games. Trevor Bozinski back in a quarterback through an interception on their last drive. It goes again to Karan Robinson, and he is stuffed on first down. And tons of whistles. Remember, there was a personal foul penalty after the whistle. This time, Akron backs off after stopping Robinson. But Patterson will see if there's Heisman talk within the next week. I mean, you think about what he's done the last three games, Malik. You were there at Bowling Greeny, scored four on the ground, and he ends it with a 57-yard touchdown. He scores eight, matching the FBS record last week, and two more today. I mean, 14 touchdowns in three games. Unbelievable. Talk about being in shape. This kid is in shape shape. They got a Robinson again, avoids an arm tackle. Karana Robinson's off, still on his feet, and finally he's bumped down at the legs by Tyson Durant, the freshman, saving a touchdown, ended up being a 29-yard run. The young guy Robinson following the suit, just like all the other running backs in the stable, being able to have great balance, staying on his feet, avoiding tackles, and even almost broke that one to get all the way to the end zone. You can tell that this stable of running backs, they watch a lot of film, and not only on each other, but they watch it on the defense. And the, the fact that they've all been able to make plays shows just how deep that running back room is. And right behind a second string offensive line, one of the top running teams in the country, second to Air Force coming in. It's not just the specific personnel and the skill guys. Robinson tries to stiff arm once again, and he's spun across the 45-yard line. That'll bring up second down. But you look at a guy like Patterson. He, Marks, and Robinson have helped Buffalo combine for 385 yards on the ground here today. But talking to Lance Leipold about Patterson in particular, he said, you know, he's the kind of guy you have to tell your TV truck, hey, hide the quarter and the amount of time left. Hide the score, everything, and just look at him. He's as fresh in the fourth quarter as he is to start the game. Oh, that's his biggest trait, being able to get stronger in the fourth quarter. And I've talked to him as well, and that's his favorite trait about himself is that he's able to get strong and finish strong in the fourth quarter. Ah, right up the gut to the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. And another player factoring into the running brigade, Tajay Ahmed, the sophomore, in for six, a 44-yard scamper. And Buffalo, once again, over 50 points today. At this point, they're pulling guys out of the locker rooms. They're pulling guys out of the stands, out of the student center to put to put them into some pads and a helmet and run behind the offensive line. And you can tell this talent, not only on this football team, but on this campus. I haven't even seen Ahmed before. For him to be able to show the burst of speed, get into the second level and finish him for a touchdown, I mean, that running back room just grows and grows. Now they've eclipsed their season average and some. Remember, Patterson all by himself at 409 last week. Extra point try. It's not McNulty. Instead, Jackson Bolter kicks it through. Now they'll be playing for the MAC championship next week in Detroit against Ball State. And right now, Patterson cheering on all the guys getting in right now. Oh, man, and that's that leadership that you talk about. Not only does he lead on the field, but he's going to be the guy that's your biggest cheerleader as well, especially those young running backs that look up to him and what he's done. Yeah, I saw a little Johnny Drama victory <laughs> from Jared Patterson. Well, he falls shy of Barry Sanders. Not an easy mark to get to. Most rushing yards in three consecutive games. Sanders did this last three games of the 1988 regular season his Heisman winning year so the game against Texas Tech Malik was actually played in Tokyo Japan <laughs> they went all the way out there and that was the day the Heisman was awarded so it's nighttime in New York and they had Sanders in a Tokyo studio <laughs> 
at like five or six in the morning. And if you watch the video, he kind of looks to the side. He's exhausted. <laughs> And he's saying, why'd you have to wake me up? <laughs> but if you were getting the Heisman, I think you would. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're playing all the way in Tokyo, I think that plays a part in the why he became an international superstar and a Hall of Fame great. He's done it all over the world. This is Jeremiah Knight with the return out across the 20. And the Buffalo special teams in pursuit. Here with 334 to play. Now I'm expecting from this offense coming out, a lot of people at home will say, why don't you just run the clock out? But with Tom Art and what he wants to do with his quarterback, he wants to put him in position to still operate and execute. I don't expect any change of pace from this offense. I still expect them to go try to score another touchdown and try to close that gap that's able, that, that we see is so far apart right now. Tom Arth is a Division Three guy. Lance Leipold the same. Both play quarterback at their respective schools, later coached. Leipold, the legend at Whitewater in Wisconsin. Tom Arth at John Carroll in Ohio. The Shields fights pressure and completes it short. Tristan Brank, the freshman tight end, with the catch. Now, they never faced each other as coaches in Division Three, but Tom Arth, his last year at John Carroll, led the Blue Streaks to wins for the conference title against Mighty Mount Union. Maybe the greatest Division Three program of all time. And then they went on the road in the quarterfinals and beat Whitewater, which at that point is like beating the behemoth in the sport. <laughs> he certainly did. And that's what earned him the job at Akron. Clearly, yep. you know, coming over two gigantic wins and to still get a chance at Akron is, is what you want to see. Another check down tonight. There's a flag on the play with under three to play and Boogie Knight. Taken down at the legs. Offside defense, number 38 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, repeat, second down. And there's Tom Mark leading John Carroll on the road against Wisconsin Whitewater. This was 2016. Made it all the way to the final four in Division Three that year. Some great wins on the way. Mount Union, they took them down as well. And certainly something you never forget. He actually, his final win as a college quarterback in 2002, they beat Brockport in overtime. Brockport, not too far from Buffalo. It's right outside of Rochester. This is Knight once again. He's bottled up at the 39-yard line here at 2.18 to go. I know coach wants to make more of those memories at a place like Akron, especially in a Mac where there's so many talented teams, so many great legendary coaches that exist in here. I know he wants to raise that level of competition up with this Akron football team, and it's going to take some time. Not every program is a, is a one and done program where you can get a bunch of transfers in and, and end up being an instant success like we've seen in the Mac. But for Tom Arth and what he wants to accomplish here is something that's going to take some time. But when it does, it's going to be rolling for years to come. He's in his second year right now. One of the staff and assistants he's worked with at John Carroll in Chattanooga. Knight up the gut, across midfield, breakaway, almost. Tripped up where it could have been a touchdown for Boogie Knight. Gantley got him. And Akron will hold on to it with 135 to go. Ends up being a 26-yard run. What a tackle. This is what you call it. don't give up. And look at that shoestring tackle. Just enough to trip him up. And that's what it takes. This Buffalo defense is stout. That was your third, third down conversion. Check down again tonight this time. He's a few yards shy of the first down with 115 left. So Akron season ends here today. Buffalo on to Detroit for the Friday championship game for the Mid-American Conference against Ball State. Not a bad week to be in the top 25 for the first time in school history. And now you know your opponent for the conference title. Pass complete to a guy they're high on, Tony Grimes. They feel he has a real future at Akron. And the tackle made by Buffalo's Sean Dolak. Tony Grimes has been targeted each and every drive and all early and often. I think he's the centerpiece to this offense in terms of explosive plays, especially with Tion Dollard being out. Knight to the 23-yard line. 
So it started with Patterson and Marks for Buffalo. Set the tone. They had five first half touchdowns. And you can't forget the blocked field goal and returned all the way to the house by Tyrone Hill. The Shields intercepted. Jumped around back the other way is Shamar Hayes as he's knocked out near midfield. And that will be the capper with seven seconds to go. What a great play by Hayes being able to finish. And you see the team coming to congratulate them, stopping the drive where Akron was really moving the football. And let's just look at this one-on-one. -on -one. This is how you compete as a defensive back. Get off of me and watch him run and return this ball back. This is what physicality looks like at the secondary position. And that's what you call winning your one-on-one -on -one matchups. I thought Akron had to do a lot winning that. But as you can tell, Buffalo was a little more aggressive on that. And he just snatched it from me. Give me those cookies, Hayes said. And that's what it that's a nice cap off to a great victory by this Buffalo team. Uh, you're still raving about the double tree cookies, aren't you? <laughs> that was it. Oh man, those are great. Gotta get some when I go back. Buffalo a winner top scoring team of the country 56 to 7 Bulls over Akron to close this 2020 regular season Lance Leipold and Tom Arth D3 guys who've worked their careers up the various ladders to their programs here in the Mid-American Conference Buffalo led by this man Still perfect, 5-0. and oh, And Patterson and the Bulls on a collision course with Ball State for the MAC title next week. Here are the standings in the East. And Buffalo had to beat Kent State a couple of weeks ago. That was thought to be the game of the year in the MAC. They did so, and now the final standings in the East Division. Just super impressive for Buffalo to have in a COVID season like this, play on top, get five wins out of this, and head to the MAC championship against Ball State who's going to be one of the toughest teams they faced all year. And this is the matchup that you wanted to see. This built up all year for this. Ball State earned it. Buffalo's earned it. Let's see what happens next week. Bulls and Cardinals in six days in Motown. Here today in Western New York, the Bulls over the zips. We'll hear from Jared Patterson, Lance Leipold, Buffalo winner here on CBS Sports Network. Here in Western New York today, Buffalo caps a perfect regular season, 56 to 7 over Akron today on CBS Sports Network. Jared Patterson, 105 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, got the second half off, and he joins us now. Jared, it's Ed and Malik here in the booth. Malik didn't go the Ross Tucker route. He didn't plead for you to get in <laughs> after halftime. And you know what? We watched you on the sideline cheering down the stretch. I mean, this was a combined rushing attack here today, wasn't it? Yeah, man, it was definitely a, a combined rushing attack, you know, from the running back uh, group. But we got to give, you know, credit to the guys up front, man. They do a, a tremendous job week in and week out. And without uh, them, we couldn't rush for those how many yards. I got a, got a chance to talk to you the other day, and you said that the thing that you cared about the most was how running backs finish at the end. What do you think about the collective effort from that running back stable and the, guy, the amount of things that you guys accomplished at the end of this one? Uh, man, we just take pride of finishing. You know, it's, 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 it shows, you know, how we practice. We practice hard. You know, we push each other. And, you know, we, we want to finish this, the game all right. And we want to finish this season, you know, the right way. He got the second half off. And obviously, six days from now, this is what you guys work for. A spot in the MAC championship trying to win a conference title. You'll face Ball State in Detroit. Give us a sense of where your focus is right now, where your body is, and obviously getting a break those final two quarters here today. Yeah, it's huge. You know, uh, you know, right after we went up early, you know, uh, uh, in halftime, you know, the coach said, I, I, you know, I was done. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I was uh, kind of, you know, I was okay with it because we, 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 we got to achieve a bigger goal which is the MAC championship, you know, we feel fresh, you know, I feel fresh, and this was just a dominated win, you know, as you can see, and the depth we have, you know, on our football team, you know, it, it shows. And James, I mean, and Jared, I mean, this is incredible. We call you Sweet Feet JP. Is there any moment of the night that you enjoyed the most? You know, there's so much going on from special teams to what you guys were able to accomplish on the scoreboard, but what did you take most from tonight? Uh, you know, just seeing guys finally get the opportunity, you know, and, and make plays, you know, on, on the offensive side and, and defensive side, you know, and that, 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 that's, that's what I enjoyed the most, you know. Appreciate you, man. It's been a great watching you.
Thank you so much. Hey, Jared, thanks. Thank you. 105 yards today for Jared Patterson. He and Kevin Marks each scoring two touchdowns as we look at the final numbers. And that's a major advantage for Buffalo on the ground. Akron, great in the RPO. Bulls, too good on the ground again here today. It just shows that the total package of this offense is with the running backs, with the leadership of Van Trees, and just the confidence, the confidence in this team to play all four quarters. Lance Leipold and the Bulls back to the MAC championship game against Ball State. Coach, it's Ed and Malik up here in the booth. We'll talk a little bit about what's at stake with the Cardinals in a second. But first off, it seemed like you got a lot from a number of pieces here today. It wasn't just Jared Patterson, the ground attack, and even Van Trees opening things up for that big touchdown to Wilson. Yeah, that was it was great to get a lot of guys involved. You know, once we were able to get a little bit of a lead, we thought we could take some of the carries off of Jarrett. I thought Kevin Marks played extremely well. Ron Cook made the most of the, his most playing time probably in the backfield since he's been here. But like you said, uh, you know, the weather kind of, Played, played a little bit of tricks on us with, with the rain from time to time, but we, we were able to get that big explosive play there at the start of the third quarter. So, again, and, and to end this regular season like this and get a lot of guys on the field and do those things is a, is a great momentum as we, as we get prepared here on a short week. Like you said, Coach, it's a short week, but it's the two best teams going for the MAC championship. It's a lot of emotion going into how this season ended. What are you most excited to see, especially capping off on a season like this? Well, you know, you know, two years ago we had a chance to go there. It came up short. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people and some of the players that, that that left the program at that time through graduation and other things didn't, didn't think that we'd have a chance to get back. And the, to watch this team kind of work through so many things the last two seasons, I'm awfully proud of them and the assistant coaches for the job that they've done. That said, you know, Mike New has just done, you know, really an under-the-radar type of outstanding job rebuilding that program. So it's going to be a good matchup, and, you know, we're excited for it, and uh, we're going to need, a, a you know, a, again, a, a great week of preparation. Jared Patterson did what you asked him to do here today, as did Kevin Marks and the rest of the bunch, but gets the second half off, I would imagine, mind, body, everything else. He's right where you want him to be. Exactly. In fact, we talked earlier in the week. I said this week, uh, Jared, if if you're on the sideline and, and you know there's something there, we got a first down. You know, you know, take it out of bounds once, and, and you know, you try, try to reduce those those hits a little bit. You know, and uh, if it can, and and be smart. And I thought he did. I thought our quarterbacks played well in, in, in clock management, and and hopefully again, like you say, we we we've, we've got enough in the tank to to go up there and play our best. All the best this week. Enjoy that ride to Detroit. We'll look out for your Friday. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate you being here again to do our game. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lance Leipold and the Bulls winners today. Marks, he had two touchdowns as well. The ground attack on full display. Buffalo over Akron here this afternoon. Coming up next, our final college football game. Boise State already slated for the Mount West title game. They'll take on Wyoming. Catch it all right here on CBS Sports Network. Get going, Malik Zaire back with you here in Buffalo Bulls. They punched their ticket to the title game a couple of weeks ago against Kent State. They know it's going to be Ball State, and you have one team that's so good running the ball, Ball State. You throw in Drew Plitt, their quarterback, and Justin Hall. And, you know, Malik, that's as good as it gets. It's going to be a great one in Detroit in a couple of days on Friday night Motown. I really believe that Buffalo has really shown that this has been one of the best teams in MAC history, even though it's a short season. The things that they've been able to accomplish from an individual's perspective to a team perspective and just the total encompass of what they mean to the MAC is proven that these are the two best teams going into the championship, and it's going to be a great finish. Uh, Patterson, a couple of touchdowns. Marks with two touchdowns as well. Patterson didn't reach some of the records we knew he had a chance at here today, but as we heard from Lance Leipold, that was the plan going in. If we're up, you're going to rest, and he's going to have a full head of steam next week. And it just shows you that they're not so much about individual records. They're about getting that goal. They're going to save all the guys they need to to hit that championship full steam ahead, and they're going to be healthy and ready to go. Bulls a winner over Akron here today, 56-7 to the final. So for Malik Zaire and our entire CBS crew, I'm Ed Cohen. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Let's head out now to Laramie, Wyoming, Boise State, and the Cowboys of Wyoming, as we say so long from Buffalo.